Hello, and welcome back to Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. Today, we'll be hopefully finishing the episode 4, Learn About Goodbyes. Let's start this one with the Day 3 Investigation. December 27, 2.11pm, Wright & Co. Law Office. What was Mr. Edgeworth talking about? Memory of a crime that I committed. Memory of a murder. You really think Mr. Edgeworth killed? I don't believe it. Not Edgeworth. That painful memory has been troubling him recently. But he would never take someone's life. Never. Heck. Yo, how's everyone doing? What do you think of my performance today? I am swooning in the Aeolus, huh, Maya? The swooning? Me? Oh, oh yes, I do remember feeling faint. Right on, tell me the truth. It was like laugh at first try sight, right? Nick? Huh, me? I well, maybe my heart skipped a beat or two. I think you can do better than that. Come on, I saved Edgeworth in there, dude. Edgy. You guys should be bowing before me. Yeah, bow before your hero. Um, this trial. You really, really helped out in the trial today. You did. If you, want that. You, if you weren't there, Larry, I'm sure Mr. Edgeworth would have been found guilty. <laughs> Serious, Nick. That bow chop character your guy is pretty suspicious. And she ain't off the hook yet. I hate to spoil the mood, Larry. Hey, what's with the guy sitting in the audience, you know? From where I was sitting, Edgy seemed pretty edgy. I mean, can you really know he's telling the truth about that night? Nick? I don't know. But what I do know is... I'm going to believe in you two until the end. Us two? Edgeworth and who else? You mean me, right? Uh, he means me, right, Nick? Yeah, you, Larry. Not me. But why you, Larry? Huh? Um, actually, yeah, why me, Nick? Hmm, enough with the sale and treatment. Nick, why do you trust Mr. Edgeworth so much? I mean, he has changed recently, true. But when we first met him, he was kind of a jerk, don't you think? I didn't know him back then. That's when he wanted to become defense attorney. Wait. <laughs> Was that when he two were classmates? Yes. Great go. They saved me. Miles. And Larry. They saved me and I'll never forget it. That's why I became a defense attorney, you know? What? Hey, hey, Larry. What's he talking about? Yeah? Um. Sorry, I kind of forgot. Hmm. Okay, Nick. Good with it. I'm going to hear this story today, and that's final. Okay, okay. Kind of a long story, so hang in there. Just the very end of third grade. I was in trial. A close class trial. Class trial? You remember, Larry? Spring, end of third grade? Kid in our class got his lunch money stolen. Lunch money? Our school was really small. Every month, kids would bring in an envelope with money for lunch from home. Oh, I see. Anyway, this kid's envelope disappeared, with $38 still inside. But yeah, now that you mention it, I do remember that. I can see why would you forget, though. We were one out of the school that day. Anyway, the envelope had been stolen during PE classes. I was coming down with a cold, so I skipped PE that day. I was the only one and not in class. Oh, they told you did it? Yeah, the kids in class said I should be put on trial. Trial? Well, the next day we held a classroom trial. And me as the defendant. I, I didn't do it. Guilty, who did it? Guilty, guilty, give the money back. You're such a meanie, no one play with him. Just admit you did it. You can't hide the truth. Tell us the truth. We're not gonna play with you anymore, yeah. You should be allowed to really erase. Or a library, give me back my 50 cents I loaned you, hey! Oh, Phoenix. 
You know, you shouldn't steal people's money. It's not right. In the end, even the teacher thought I would done it. Go over and apologize, Phoenix. I... I didn't know what was happening. It was so sad. I couldn't stop crying. Everyone was staring at me like I'd done it. I tried to apologize. I went to where the boy was money has been stolen was sitting. That's when it happened. I shouldn't have to apologize. The only thing that belongs to in a trial is evidence. Anything else has no place. You should all be ashamed, amateurs. Um, Miles? It wasn't you who stole my money, was it? No. Then you shouldn't apologize. Everyone's been shouting you did it, but no one has any proof. It's why, your honor, this boy is innocent. Miles, it was your money that was stolen. Yeah, yeah. Did it. He's the one. Can you prove? Why don't you all just shut up? This is always how it is. Everybody ganging up and picking on one person. Just think how it feels. He said he didn't do it, so he didn't do it. Very well. I'll replace the money myself. The last trial is over. How it happened. After that, the three of us were the best of friends. Wow, I had no idea. Yeah, I had no idea either. I mean, I forgot. That's when I learned what it meant to be alone. Totally alone, without a friend in the world. That's a good thing, Larry. Um, yeah, well... I was just lucky that I took the day off from school. If I'd been there, they would have thought I'd done it. They took it kind of personally, see? Nothing smells is usually the belts. After the trial. Anyway, Edgeworth and I talked after that class trial. That's when I heard his father was defense attorney. I remember his eyes would shine when he talked about his father. I'm going to become a defense attorney, just like my father. Famous defense attorney. And a few months later, he suddenly transferred to another school. The EOC incident, right. I'm not sure, but the transfer probably had to do with his father's death. That's so sad. Just several years later, when I heard Edgeworth's name again, I read an article about him in the newspaper. The headline was something like Suspicions of the Demon Attorney. Fabricating evidence, manipulating testimonies, covering up facts. The article said he would do anything to get a guilty verdict. Anything. Why? What happened? I mean, that's not the edgy I used to know at all. <clears> hmm. <throat> that's what I thought too. I tried to get in touch with him, I don't know how many times. He never replied. I didn't want to see his old friends. I could just drop it though. I wanted to meet him, to learn why he had become who he became. That's when I decided. Wait, you don't mean... That's why? That's why you became a defense attorney? To meet Edgeworth? If I was a defense attorney, I knew he would have to meet me whether he wanted me or not. The court. Edgeworth believed in me, and I believe in him. He didn't pain, and no one else is on his side. I'm the only one who knows the real Edgeworth. I'm the only one who can help him. Whoa, Nick. So, is that why you helped me out for free? Uh, yes. I helped you because I believed in you. Except I don't remember saying I would do it for free. Oh, Nick, Nick! Nick, I have to save Mr. Edgeworth if it's the last thing we do, okay? Right, it may very well, maybe. Where's there that rental boat shop caretaker? I need to find out who or what he is. I'd settle for the who. I guess I can clean out some of this evidence that I no longer need. Okay, let's go. So let's move to... In him, I guess. Here. Hey pal, long time no see. Oh, Detective Gumshoe. Both on today, eh? Not so worked up, I snapped my tie in half. Uh, sorry about that. No problem, pal, thanks to you. Now we know who really did it. I mean, the boat shop caretaker? Look, I'll make you a promise. I'll have that scoundrel in my custody by trial time tomorrow. I oh, what may. My duty to you as a police officer. I'm off to catch the criminal. 
Hmm, Detective Gumshoe sure is active today. Oh, and one other thing. Huh? No one can go into the woods today. Woods? Oh, well, that was camping? The woods are off limits to camping, and apparently the park ranger found out. You got pretty mad. No one can go in for a while. That what is in a lot of trouble. Anyway, I'll be seeing you tomorrow. Let's go... Beach? Ah, the steel ice door is missing. Ice door? Looks like the hot dog stand is closed too. I guess Larry's too busy worrying about Mr. Ashworth to show up for work. You wanna go to the boat rental shop? Well, the caretaker got away. Never imagined he might be the real murderer. <clears throat> I know that clearing of the throat anywhere. What's the uh, lawyer? Ah, hello, what might you be doing here? Out for a walk, hmm? Ah, the days of my youth. I get a set of fresh lemon, you see? Mr. Grossberg! This is no time for idle reminiscing. Mr. Edgeworth's trial ends tomorrow. Uh, that is true, yes. From what I saw of today's trial, Edgeworth should be fine, right? Well, I'm not so sure about that. Oh, what do you mean by that? I'm not sure. Find anything out, come by my office at once. I may be able to offer you some assistance. Thanks, bye. What do you think Mr. Grossberg was doing here anyway? Who knows? Hmm, nobody's home. Hello, hello! Hey, Polly, I wonder where the owner's gone, Polly. Hello, hello! I believe he'd run off and leave his poor parrot to fend for herself. Oh, hello! Maybe I should take care of Polly, Nick. Polly shouldn't just kidnap her. Please know about her anyway. I'm sure we'll do something. Okay. Sorry, Polly. Let's see if I can take you. Now the bird's going to hate me. Reminds me, Nick. Holy here knows the number to the safe, right? Yeah, that's right. Holy, what's the number to the safe? 928. Let's open it, Nick. Come on. I'm sure there isn't any money in there. Oh. Hey. It keeps it locked, right? There must be something of value in there. So sure. Okay, Nick, let's see what's in there. I guess there might be a clue or two. The only thing in there is a letter. Letter? Boring. Hmm. There's no name or signature on this thing. It's handwritten in very precise, clear letters. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. Edgeworth? And then Nick, why would Mr. Edgeworth then be on here? How should I know? I'm going to read the whole thing. Get your revenge on the Miles Edgeworth. This, says, this is your last chance. Now it's the time to get revenge on the two men who ruined your life. The rest of the letter goes to describe the murder plot in detail. It is Robert Hammond and Tim Edgeworth. Getting Edgeworth out of the lake, getting on the boat, firing twice. This is exactly what I figured out today in court. All here in perfect detail. What do you think it means, Nick? I don't know, but it looks like these are the instructions for the take caretaker. He called Robert Hammond and called out Edgeworth, he was following instructions. Who could have written that letter? And what does it mean to get revenge on Miles Edgeworth? Well, I don't know, okay? But I'm on things uh, for certain. This letter is an amazing clue. Letter from the safe added to the court record. Very nice. What's new? Perhaps we can go back to... September 27, okay. Look as grim as always. Hmm. Mr. Edward, I have this story about the class trial. Class trial? What do you mean? You don't remember? No, I don't. Your lunch money was stolen, wasn't it? In third grade? 
How much money? Oh, oh, right. Yes, I seem to remember something like that. I think if you're the only one who remembers. Well, it probably only really mattered to me anyway. The stretch board, did you know? Well, it was the reason Nick became a defense attorney. Ridiculous. Gee, thanks. That said, it does sound like the kind of thing you would do. You haven't changed a bit, have you, right? So simple. To a fault, even. Well, maybe. Yeah, but... I think you changed too much, Edward. Perhaps. Let's show him the evidence. But first, let him show the DL6. It was that case that changed my life. Tomorrow, on December 28th, the statute of limitation runs out. Tomorrow, could that be a coincidence? But even if the case is finally closed on paper, it will never be erased from my memory. Never. Poor Miss Trashmore. Hey, Nick, no! That's a photo of his father, don't show him that! Oh, this isn't a good time to dredge up those memories. What is it? Um, uh, nothing, huh? Letter from the safe. Trashmore? This letter? Hmm. It came out of the safe in the slag where the boat rental caretaker lives. I see. Huh? Revenge on me? Who's that old guy anyway? I I don't know. Could be an innocent defendant, you got declared guilty or something? That's right. But I don't remember that old man. Not at all. I'm not following this letter then. Which means there was someone else behind it. Time to get on the revenge of the two men who ruined your life. Two men, meaning myself and Robert Hammond? No to test, this is your last chance. Last chance? Wait, maybe. Maybe it's talking about the statute of limitations on the DL6 incident. Hmm. Wait. Wait, that old man. What is it? Do you know who he is? Yogi. Would he be Yogi? Yogi? Suspect in the DL6 incident, the one who was found innocent. Okay, let's talk to him about that. Yanni Yogi. Yanni Yogi was a core bailiff at the time. We just happened to be in the elevator together 15 years ago. Wake was incredibly strong. Before I knew it, everything was dark. We were there for so long, you know, it felt like forever. Thinned, and darkness closed in on us in that little box. We became unsettled. Help, I can't breathe! And I said quiet, you are not making this any easier. I want to get out, help, get us out! Don't shout, we should use more oxygen. all I remember. When I came to, I was in a hospital bed, sta staring up at the ceiling. In court, Jan and Yogi's mental condition was called into question. He claimed the oxygen deprivation and the stress had caused temporary insanity. In the end, the claim passed to the court and Yogi was found innocent. Huh. But isn't that strange? This letter tells him to get revenge on Edgeworth. Why do you want to take revenge on you? Right. Yeah? There's something that's been troubling me these last few days. I didn't know whether or not I should tell you. You mean the nightmare? It's a nightmare I've had. The memory of a crime that I committed. I mean committed. Memory of a murder. I think. I think the time has come to tell all. Nightmare. In the last 15 years, I've had the same dream almost every night. I wake up in a fearful sweat every time. What kind of dream? The dream about my father's killing in the dark. Help, I can't breathe. But it's a quiet, you're not making this any easier. I have to get out, help, get us out. Don't shout, you'll just use up more oxygen. I can't breathe. You're just using up my air. What? Stop breathing my air. I'll, I'll stop you. Ah, what? What are you? Stop breathing my air. Oh, father. He 
attacking father. When I see the pistol lying by my feet. I don't know if it was evidence from that day in court or the bailiffs. In a daze, I pick up the pistol. Get away! Get away from my father! Dang. Ah. And with that scream, I wake. A cold chilling scream. A scream that has rung in my ears for the past 15 years. Hmm. But, but it's just a dream, right? Right? Thought is the only thing that kept me sane for the past 15 years. But what if I'm wrong? What if it's real? They say that sometimes people shut out memories in self-defense. Maybe it was I who killed my father. What? If you think about it, that's way this letter makes sense. Get your revenge on Mills Ed Miles Edgeworth. Think about it. Yogi was really innocent. That's why he wanted revenge against me. Wait, Edgeworth, you, you mean... It was me. I was the true criminal of DL6. I shot my father. This is bad. What are you going to do, Nick? What can we do? I don't know. I don't think there is anything we can do. Like it or not. If there's someone else who knows about, about DL6 incident, maybe. There is, Nick. There is someone who knows about DL6. I know there is. Let's talk to Grosberg. Mr. Grosberg, ah, uh, hello there, what's wrong? You look troubled. No kidding, I can't believe you're not. My, my, my. Just calm down and tell me what happened, hmm? Mr. Edgeworth, he he. See, so Edgeworth's grandpa shot his own father? Only a dream, only a dream? I wonder. What? If that's the case, then why do you two look so troubled, hmm? Well, let me consider this. Yogi quite certainly holds the grim grudge against Miles Edgeworth. So deep you'd want to frame him for murder. This leads me to surmise. What Mr. Edgeworth dreamt was not a dream, it was real. As he imagined. Miles Edgeworth threw the pistol to save his father. The pistol fired, and the deed was done. No! I don't believe it. Yogi was suspected of murder and his carrier, his bailiff, was irrevocably wrecked. Thus, they sought revenge on Miles Edgeworth. This was his last chance, of course, with the Statue of Limitation so close. Okay. Present him with the... Oh no! So this is the letter? Just that the Yogi was following this letter. I killed Hammond. Why kill Robert Hammond? I was a skilled defense attorney. But he defended clients not for their sake, but for his own. Huh, his own sake? He never trusted his clients, that one. The only thing he trusted was his own ability. But he got his client found innocent, so why should it matter? Actually, my dear, it's quite different. He wanted an innocent verdict for no one but himself. Yogi was a free man. Totally, he was ruined. Huh? I'll understand soon enough. Wait, what is it? This letter? I've seen this handwriting somewhere before, a long time ago. Whose handwriting was this? Do you have any idea who wrote this? Manfred? Hmm. Could it be Manfred from Karma? Karma? Why would he have something to do with this? Uh, well, I'm not sure. Hmm, good karma, good karma. Wait, wait, you're right, my boy. This is Von Karma's handwriting, I'm sure of it. You used to see it all the time on the court record. What? That means the one who told Mr. Yogi to kill was. Correct. And Fred Von Karma himself. What does that mean then? Who would Von Karma want to frame Edgeworth? Execute Von Karma. If it really was on Karma who wrote this letter, then he would know the truth. He would know that Miles Edgeworth had accidentally killed his own father. He will say as much tomorrow in court, I should think. That's the point until the court finds Miles Edgeworth guilty. Oh no! How could Von Karma know about Mr. Edgeworth's past like this? Even Mr. Edgeworth thought it was just a nightmare. Hmm. And I do not know. And I do know that Von Karma is both persistent and perfectionist. 
You may be seeking to satisfy a grudge against Gregory Edgeworth by hurting his son. What do you mean? It was 15 years ago that Karma met Gregory Edgeworth in court. And Karma did win. But he didn't make it through the trial unscared. Okay. What happened to the trial between Edgeworth's dad and Von Karma? Von Karma got the guilty verdict he wanted. He won the trial. Gregory Edgeworth accused Von Karma of faulty evidence. And though he lost the trial, Mr. Edgeworth's accusation stood. Faulty evidence? He was the only penalty Von Karma has ever received in his career as a prosecutor. Gregory Edgeworth dealt below to his perfect trial record. Wow. It must have been quite a shock for Von Karma. He took a vacation for several months after that, you see. Vacation? Yes, an initial event for the man. It was the first and the last vacation he's taken in his many years of prosecuting. Really? Does he not take vacations? Like, go to the sea or uh, the mountains? Don't tell me he's never been to Europe! Have strange ideas about vacations, Mario. In any case, that was the only time he took a vacation from work. I believe the penalty upset him quite a lot. But uh, if he wanted to keep a perfect record so badly, why would he take such a long vacation? What do we do, Nick? When Karma is going to bring up DL6, you can bet on it. What if Mr. Edgeworth pleads guilty to DL6? I won't let him. Um, yes, Mr. Wright. I had to say this, but even accidental murder is murder, you know? You know that. I just believe in Edgeworth's innocence. I believe he'd kill someone. But Nick, Strangeworth admits it himself. His father must have lied to protect him from behind the grave. I don't care. No, he's not guilty. Mr. Wright? If you say so, I suppose I could go check again. Police files might hold something interesting. Mr. Grossberg? Thank you. Don't promise anything. In fact, I think the chances of finding something are slim. I understand. Police matters. Materials, hmm? Let's go look. Let's go to the offices. On the left, Nick. Yeah, I know. Well, no time to waste. Let's go get go Let's go get going. The middle. Right? There's hardly anyone here. Everyone must be out looking for the old guy, Yogi. And it's you. I don't think Mr. Gamsho will be coming back today. He's staying out late looking for someone. Sounds like Detective Gamsho is pounding the pavement for real. We're wondering if we could check out the re records room again. Well, no, I can't have just anyone wandering around in there. But I guess Mr. Von Karma is in there now anyway. I can go in as long as it's there. Von Karma? Yes, he just arrived actually. Von Karma's in the records room. Nick, let's hurry. Dusty as always. We were only here just yesterday, I'm sure they just haven't had time to clean. What's wrong, Nick? That's just the only thing that he isn't here. Karma. Okay, examine. Oh, one of the drawers here is open. Someone must have been looking in it recently. The label says, unsolved cases, evidence. Mm, unsolved cases? Nick, the file for deal 6, it's completely empty. The what? What are you doing here? And Karma! You! How do you know my name? Huh? Have we met? What are you saying? We see each other every day, don't we? Miles Edwards defense team. Defense team? Um, I beg your pardon. You see, I really remember defense attorneys. They were like bugs to me. Needless Sphinx to be crushed. Let's see how this guy was Edwards' mentor. Okay, let's present to him this evidence. Mr. Von Karma, have a look at this. This was you, wasn't it? You instructed Yanni Yogi to commit murder. Yanni Yogi? How many years has it been since I've heard him called by a name? He's a fool. I told him to burn it after he read it. Well, you admit it! You wrote Mr. Yogi this letter. Yes, my dear defense attorney. Thank you for taking the trouble to bring it to me. Save me from a lot of needless hassle. What? Nick, what is this thing? 
Calm down. For self-defense, usually. Indeed. 800,000 volts will course through your body like a dog touching an electric fence. 600,000... Oh, don't worry, people don't die from it, usually. Uh, give me the letter. No! No! Oh, what are you? Hey, run! Uh... Oh, yeah! Out of my way. Uh... Uh, he got us. The letter's gone, of course. And he took the DLC's evidence, all of it. Back to having no clues. Wait, my job first. Oh yeah, is she okay? It's gonna be me, alright? Uh, oh yeah. Oh yeah, open your eyes. Oh yeah. Letter, did he take it? Huh? Oh yeah. Are you okay? I couldn't stop him. Chopped as fast as I could, but one shot from that thing knocked me out too cold. I'm useless. I'm no good as a lawyer or medium. I can't even call my sister. Not even now when uh, we need her the most. I wish I hadn't woken up at all. Oh yeah. There, there has to be some way that I can help her. I better do something about her self-confidence first. Hmm. Oh yeah. I'm holding something. What is that? Is that a bullet? DLC incident ranks number 7, taken from the heart of Gregory Edgeworth. I remember. Karma was holding this when Maya jumped him. DLC's bullet. Dash in the pocket. Okay. I'll prove it to you, Maya. You're most definitely not useless. I'll prove it to you in court tomorrow. Okay, that bullet is from that gun, I guess. Don't make sense. Okay. Well, we are done with this. Now we're going to trial, but we have no evidence. Final day, trial. September 28, 9.51 a.m. This is it. Judgment day. Today, things are going to get settled at last. A lot of things. Well, what's the big idea? Nick, I'm gonna touch your shoulder. But the shock has been worn off from your run in with the stun gun yesterday. Anyhow, yeah, today's the last day of the trial. Good luck, Nick. Yeah, thanks, Maya. Hmm. Edgeworth is looking glum as always. I hope when Karma doesn't push him too hard. Ooh, ah. What are you doing? Sorry, I'm sorry. I just thought I would cheer you up with a pat on the back. Oh yeah. Maybe you should go outside and discharge. Right, good idea. Electrocute anyone on your way out. Oh yeah, pal. What got into that girl? Back to Gumshoe. Morning, Mr. Edgeworth. Uh, good morning. Where did it go, detective? No fear, as promised, I've captured our runaway caretaker. Just brought him in. Took all night, pal. Thanks, Detective Kamshi. You must be tired. Actually, after that shock I got from the, on the way in, I feel pretty good. Greg says he's forgotten his own name. That has to be a lie. Why would he want revenge on Edgeworth if he couldn't remember his past? He does remember. I'm going to prove it. Okay. The court. court is now in session for the trial of Miles Edgeworth. The defense is ready, owner. Prosecution is ready. Huh. Uh, right, very well. We have reached the final day of our proceedings in this trial. Ask that the prosecution submit decisive evidence. Understood. Let me off by silence every time he little thing he says. Very well, Mr. Von Karma. Opening statement. Right. Thanks to Detective Gumshoe's effort, the boat rental shop caretaker has been arrested. Yesterday's trial, the defense asserted that the caretaker was the murderer. However, the caretaker has yet to confirm this. I would like to ask the defense to cross-examine him as much as necessary. Very well. 
Please bring your witness into the courtroom. Ladies and gentlemen of the court, I believe you all remember our witness. He lives at the boat rental shop on the lake, from where he witnessed the incident. In addition, he has currently lost memory of his name and identity. Witness, why didn't you run away yesterday? Witness was not running away. He will now testify. I see. Very well. Please begin your testimony. Um. I left court. Okay. Um, I'm really sorry about just leaving yesterday like that, did, but I wasn't running away or nothing. I uh, went to buy some food for Polly, you see? I figured I got nothing to do with the incident anyhow. I mean, I would need one of those money things, right? And I don't got one on. My testimony yesterday stands as is. Hmm, very well. Let's begin the cross-examination, shall we? This to know his name. Johnny Yogi. Johnny Yogi, and I'm going to prove it. Okay. Let's see how much evidence I actually got. I still have the case file, and I got the photo, now I have a bullet as well. I'm really sorry about just leaving yesterday like I did, press. I'll call you what you did running away, and not just leaving. I heard Larry's testimony and realized you were in danger. Now, Mr. Wright, there's no need to rush to conclusions. As I said, the witness was not running away. Listen to the testimony. Everything's relaxed. We both do. Mon Karma and Yana Yogi. He wasn't running away or nothing. Then why did you leave? I was just about to say why. It's so hard for you to just quietly listen when someone is talking. Quietly, Edgeworth would be guilty in three minutes. I uh, want to buy some food for Polly, see? Food? Well, Polly is a bit of a gourmet, you see? He only eats these high quality bird pellets from France. I only have them in the big pet shop downtown. You weren't arrested until this morning. Why did you go? Then you go back to the caretaker's shack. Uh, well, I don't get lost, you see. The witness has trouble remembering things sometimes. When the police apprehended him, he was on his way back to the shack. Yeah, right. Let's try about karma. No one's going to believe that. Hmm, I see. So he was lost. Please, your honor, come to your senses. I figure I got nothing to do with this incident anyhow. You lost not much of your memory, is that correct? Uh, yep, seems like it. How could you know that you didn't have anything to do with this incident? Uh, or maybe you're lying about not having your memory, huh? You know exactly who you are. The witness has testified quite clearly that he has no memory of who he is. If you claim he's lying, then show us the court proof. How am I supposed to prove what's going on in this old butcher's head? It's impossible. Hmm, I'm glad you've come to your senses, Mr. Wright. Very well, witness. Please continue. I mean, I would need one of those motive things, right? And I don't got one. How can you say you had no motive? I say you do. You had a grudge against Edgeworth and the victim, Robert Hammond. So you took revenge on them, right? Please, don't make repeat myself, Mr. Wright. This witness has no memory of anything built several years ago. can't hold a grudge, it's impossible. Let's prove his lack about his memory. Otherwise, it's going to be the same thing over and over again until the trial ends. Can I say something, Mr. Wright? Yes, yes, Your Honor. You've been saying the same thing now over and over. You've been calling the witness's memory of the past or lack thereof into question. But does this really have anything to do with the current case? Of course, Your Honor. The witness uh, has said he has nothing to do with this case and no motive. All of these statements are lies. Of 
over there, over there. Mr. Right, there's a serious problem with your claim. What are you saying? Are you saying you know who this witness is? Of course, Your Honor. Oh, ho, ho, now this is interesting. I'd like to know myself, so who is he? Don't play dumb, Mr. Karma. Mr. Right, please tell us this witness's name. Yani Yogi. His name is Yani Yogi, a former court bailiff. Yogi? That name seems familiar. Oh! Yanni Yogi, from the DL6 incident. This judge would have heard of it. It's such a famous case. What does this mean? Your Honor, if this man is Mr. Yogi, then he has clear motive. Jumping to conclusions again, Mr. Wright. This man, this witness, is Yanni Yogi. Fascinating. However, how do you propose to prove this to the court? In the court of law. It's a miracle. You need proof. Allow me to repeat once more that the witness has lost his memory. This is it. I have to do this now. I can prove his yogi right here, right now. I've got nowhere else to go. How are you going to prove it? How can you prove that he's Yanni Yogi? Okay, it's actually quite simple. Here, please take this man's fingerprints. I will compare them to the fingerprints of file from Yanni Yogi 15 years ago. E, that makes sense. <laughs> I'm so very, very sorry, Mr. Wright. Why? The witness has no fingerprints. What? 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 No fingerprint? You see, before I worked this caretaker with a chemical plant, I burned my fingers working with the stuff. I yup. What? Yogi, you sneak! You burn your fingerprints off to hide your past! Hmm, well if the witness has no fingerprints, yet we will not be able to prove his identity! Oh! Uh, well, what will you do, Mr. Wright? Uh, hmm, seems that the case has been decided, no? No! I know what will happen, I know everything, I, I just can't prove it! No, I can't let it end like this. I can lose. There's to be another way. There's no one who can testify as to who this witness is. No one. What are we going to do? I even consider that he might have erased his fingerprints. What do I do? <laughs> well, Mr. Wright, perhaps you like a Chris Evans his parrot for a little comic relief, hmm? Very funny. Your sore winner, one karma. Wait a second. Let's examine his parrot. What is it, Dick? Oh, you're not going to, Your Honor. The defense would like to take Mr. Von Karma up on his proposal. Mr. Von Karma up on my proposal? Exactly, Your Honor. I would like to examine the witness's pet parrot. Are you kidding me? This is fun. This is great. Order, order. Uh, well, what do you think, Mr. Von Karma? Did you even ask? This is a farce. I object. Wait a second, you are the one who suggested I cross examine the parrot for karma. I have a right to do as you suggested. Hmm. Well, if you are so desperate, then please be my guest. Of course, should you go through with this, nothing comes over with and I hope you are ready for the consequences. This is crazy. I also want to go through with your little game? Yes, I'm doing it. Let the parrot take the stance. I will crooks examine her, your honor. This is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Karma wrecked every person's testimony, every piece of evidence, except the parrot. She's my last chance. At least, I think so. Relief, bring in the parrot. <laughs> That's Quite a bird. Please tell us your name. Name. The witness is ignoring me. That's hard to be ignored by a bird. Um, very well, witness. Who is your owner? Please uh, testify for us. Uh, hello, hello. Hmm. 
certainly the most concise testimony we've heard so far. Very well, we got your cross-examination. What are you going to do, Nick? I, I don't know. What do we do, Maya? Who is your owner? Okay. Oh, well, hello, squaw. Witness, you can't just say hello and expect us to get anywhere. I need to testify. Maya, oh, yeah. you talk to her. Right, uh, what do I say? Have you forgotten something? As I recall, two days ago. Polly, Polly, have you forgotten something? Squawk. I forgot the L6. Squawk. If I can get Polly to say that here, it will prove that the caretaker had something to do with the L6. And Polly, have you forgotten something? Hello, hello, Squawk. That's not what you're supposed to say. Forgot something we forgot. Hello, hello, Squawk. Oh, no, it's not working, Nick. She won't say it. This is ridiculous. Why won't she say it? <laughs> something matter with Sir Wright? Wait, don't tell me what Karma expected this. He couldn't have retrained a parrot, could he? You train her not to respond when he asks if we've forgotten anything? Hmm, let's press him again? Or something... Let's try again this one, press. Witness, you can just say hello and expect- I want you to testify. Maya, talk to her. Right. Uh, what do I say? What's your name? I should get her to say her name. Polly, Polly, what's your name? Oh, Lee, Paul, Lee, Squawk. That's right, I think we've established that this parent's name is Polly. Does this have anything to do with her owner's identity? Uh, of course. Yes, it does. Huh. Fascinating. You claim the parent's name will prove her owner's, owner's identity? Show us, it's his proof. Nick, I don't think you are talking to bluffing a little too far? Listen, we are not here to answer the question who is the caretaker? I have to prove that he's Yana Yogi. All we have to do is tie the name Polly to Yogi. Your Honor, the proof that the pirate's uh, name reveals the caretaker right at the kitty is case file, right? The L6 case file. It's quite a large file you have there. Which page is proof on them? Show us or stop wasting our time. Hmm. Very well. Mr. Wright, please show us the page. Where in this file is the information connected to this parrot's name? Uh, suspect data. So the suspect data page. Huh? This page has all the information about Yami Yogi. After he was arrested, his fiancée committed suicide, see? Hmm, indeed, it does say that, yes. What was his fiancée's name? Holly Jenkins. Holly. Exactly, Your Honor. He wanted to remember the name of his fiancée who had committed suicide. That's why he named his parrot after her. I see, I guess that is possible. Ah, uh, mere coincidence, that's all. Your granddaughter has a dog, uh, she calls Phoenix. Oh, Mr. Phoenix, right? Does this make you my granddaughter's fine fiance? She's only seven years old? Hmm, indeed. Alone in this week for evidence, it's a murder trial. We would need some other corroborating evidence. Where am I getting to find that? Nick, we're getting closer. One more. We can just get one more piece of evidence. But what? Hmm. Very well, witness. You may continue. Well, hello. Okay, that's the same thing. What's the safe number? Maybe I'll get her to say the name and number of that safe. Huh? The safe? Why? Just try to get her to say anything, okay? Holy, what's the number of the safe in the shack? 1228, 1228. Hmm, ah, what a reckless parrot. Oh, Mr. Wright, you aren't claiming that this number has something to do with the caretaker. Actually, it does. That's why I had her say it. Ah, uh, ridiculous. How can the number of the safe tell us who the caretaker is? Show us your proof. 
Not impossible with this number to the caretaker's num uh, caretaker's true identity. Again, the case file. The DL6 case file? What is this obsession you have with that case? That's right. Find this file something relating to the safe number. Case summary. On the case summary page. Case summary? Specifically, the date on which a DL6 incident occurs. The date of the incident? December 28th? Why, that's today's date, 15 years ago. And the number on that uh, safe is 1228. Ah! Use the date of the DL6 incident as the number of his safe. Honor. That's how important that date was to him. See, it certainly is an interesting coincidence. People often do set their uh, secret numbers to the dates. Ah, this is not tangible proof. I set my ATM card number to 0001 because I'm number one. This has nothing to do with the date. Nothing. That's enough. I think we've reached a conclusion here. This is mere coincidence. That's all. That is possibility. However, two coincidences uh, at the same time it seems more like a pattern to me. W what are you saying? I'm on the caretaker of the boat shop. Immediately. Witness, tell us your name. Wait, this witness, he doesn't remember. Oh, it's okay. I've accomplished what I wanted to do. I'm done. Hey, it looks totally different. This is the real Yogi, I think, finally. He's been acting feeble to hide his true identity. Acting for 15 years. Well, let me ask you again. Please state your name for the court. My name is Yanni Yogi. Fifteen years ago I served as a bailiff in this very court. Order! Order! Yanni Yogi. So was it you who killed Robert Hammond? I tried to frame Miles Edward for his death. Yes, it was me. I did it. They put me on the witness stand fifteen years ago. Robert Hammond, he said I was mentally unsound. Well, it would make me innocent. Put me off the hook. So I pretended to have brain damage. I was innocent, really, but he didn't believe me. He won the trial, but I lost everything. I lost my job, my fiance, my social standing. And this year, 15 years later, a package arrived. It was a letter and a pistol. The plan was written out in careful detail. It was a plan for me to take my revenge on the people who ruined my life. I didn't care who had to send it. I thought it was my chance. After 15 years, this was it. Finally, a chance to have my revenge on Robert Hammond and Miles Edgeworth. I have no regrets. Wait a moment. Revenge against Miles Edgeworth? What do you mean? I'm not at liberty to speak on that matter. Why don't you ask Mr. Edgeworth yourself? Anyway, I admit it. I was the one who killed Robert Hammond. Karma, where is Mr. Yogi? Under arrest, your honor. So no room for error in his confession. And the defendant, Miles Edgeworth, is innocent, in this case at least. Hmm. Very well. Will the defendant please take the stand? There are a few mysteries left unsolved. Still, you are clear of suspicion for this uh, particular case. I would like to pass judgment on the murder of Mr. Robert Hammond. Any objection? I don't believe it. Why isn't Mon Karma saying anything? Very well. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth, not guilty. Nice. That is all. This court is adjourned. Did Hammond just say some objection? It wasn't for karma. Wait, but that means... No. Edgeworth? Honor, pick your judgment. But what do you mean? I'm not innocent at all. As we have heard, Yanni Yogi killed Robert Hammond in revenge. In revenge for what? Edgeworth is trying to confess. He's going to say he's killed him. He's going to tell them he was the murderer in the DL6 incident. 
going to tell them he killed his own dad. So, what do I do? Do I raise an objection or leave it to him? I don't know. I really don't know. I guess... Um, leave it to Edgeworth for now. No, I'm sure Edgeworth thought about this one long and hard. This isn't my place to it for fear. Are you sure? There's nothing we can do about it. This is his problem now. For 15 years, I've had a recurring dream. Nightmare. It's only a nightmare, that's what I told myself. But now I know it wasn't a dream. Yanni Yogi wasn't the killer. I mean, in the incident where your father died. From the distance of the shot, it wasn't suicide either. Everything has, was as clear as a day. The murderer, criminal in the DL6 incident, it was me. In honor, I confess my guilt. I'm guilty for DL6, the statute of limitation of which ends today. Culprit is me. Order, order, this is certainly unexpected. And then declared innocent and conf is, is confessing to a different crime. And for which the statute of limitation runs out today. I'm not really sure how I should deal with this. Uh, it's obvious. We hold a trial. Right here. Right now. Try this man for his crime of 15 years ago. I think I, think I would like to take a 5 minute recess. During this time I will consider an appropriate course of action to take. What is insurance? Okay. I'm sorry, right? I just wasted all of your efforts. Mr. Edgeworth, I just don't believe it, sir. I mean, you, you killed your dad? I didn't want to believe it myself, detective, but it's the truth. Murder is murder, no matter what the circumstances. It's crazy, just crazy. Mm -hmm. Nick, what are you doing? Huh? Oh, I was just reading through the court record once more. Getting my case ready. Your case? For what? Huh? Isn't it obvious? I'm going to prove that Miles Edgeworth is innocent. Huh? What are you talking about, Carl? He just admitted to it. He confessed that he did it in court. Sorry, Edgeworth. I don't believe you're my nightmare. Or what? It's just a dream. It's not real. The proof is right there in this court record. In any case, right in your belt. The real fight is just, just beginning. I'll prove you're innocent. Trust me. Right. December 28th. Oh well, then, I would like to resume our trial. Miles Edgeworth has admitted that he has gone guilt. He confessed his crime. Let us begin by hearing his testimony. And though it's pointless, let the defense do their cross examining. Statue of limitations on DL6 and end runs out today. Though it's unconventional for me, I would like to run this one by the book. Let's see, does the defense have any objections? No. Oh. Karma. Uh, I knew this was going to happen from the very beginning, didn't you? Very well. Uh, will Miles Edgeworth take the stand? Will the witness state his name and profession? Miles Edgeworth, I'm a prosecuting attorney. Mr. Edgeworth, 15 years ago you mistakenly killed your father, Gregory Edgeworth. Is this correct? It is correct. I testify about this matter up to the court. Ashford was telling me about his dream yesterday, I noticed something. One detail didn't quite fit. That will be the key, but only if I can get it to work. Please, please. Witness testimony. Okay. That day I had gone to the courtroom to observe one of my father's trials. As we went to leave, an earthquake struck, wrapping us in the elevator. My father and Mr. Yogi lost their composure and began to argue. Then something heavy fell at my feet. I picked it up and threw it in Mr. Yogi. I wanted them to stop fighting. But later, there was a single gunshot, then a scream. It was a terrible scream. I remember it to this day. That's all. Hmm. 
I went to no, you thought this memory was a dream. We were stuck in the elevator for five hours. The oxygen in the elevator ran out, and I lost my memory of the events. Uh, the same claim Mr. Yogi has made. Very well. That's right. Your cross-examination, please. Yes, Your Honor. Can I read the case file of the DL6? Or is there any info about it? No, it is a file. Wait, check. Check. Okay, uh, date 12 28, 2001. Location elevator. The elevator was oxygen depleted at the time of incident. Nucleus uh, found in the scene. Uh, Gregory Edgeworth, age 35, defense attorney. Trapped in elevator, returning from a lost trial with son. Edgeworth, age 9. One bullet found in heart. The murder weapon was fired twice. No evidence was found. But the gun was fired twice. How, how did it fire twice? So it's in the victim data. Suspect data Cor Bailey trapped in the elevator with the Edgeworths. Memory lost due to oxygen deprivation after his arrest. Finds he Paula Jenkins committed suicide. Okay, okay summary. Air in the elevator was oxygen depleted. Out of incident. No clues found on the scene. Okay. Due to leave an earthquake, stuck in the elevator. My father, Mr. Yogi, lost in composure and began to argue. Then something heavy fell at my feet. I up and threw it at Mr. Yogi. I wanted to stop fighting. Later there was a single gunshot, then a scream. Oh. There are two gunshots. The victim data. Are you sure you only heard one gunshot? I'm sure of that. I heard the shot and the scream. Everything faded. I was unconscious until the rescuers came. Let's see. Oh, your honor. Unfortunately, you don't. Look at this file one more time. This plainly contradicts the witness's testimony. You do enjoy dragging out the file, don't you? I don't accept this evidence unless you can tell us what page it's on. Which page contradicts Miles Edgeworth's testimony? Victim data. Look at the victim data in this file. It says it quite plainly. The murder weapon was fired twice. Miles Edgeworth only heard one gunshot. Yet the murder weapon was fired twice. The first shot was the accidental fire when the pistol was thrown. So who fired the remaining shot? Hmm. Is there perhaps another shooter fired the second shot? Your Honor, I'm sure you're aware. This incident occurred 15 years ago. The evidence is dated. The pistol did fire twice. However, we do not know when that second shot was fired. Might have been fired the day before the incident. There is no proof that the second shot had anything to do with this incident. What? Hmm, I see, I see. You have a point, Mr. Wright. The murder weapon was fired twice, as we have heard. One of those shots was fired by the defendant, a boy at the time. Do you have any proof that uh, the other f shot had something to do with this case? Let's check that photo again. Is the one bullet that was inside of him? Is there... Oh yeah, there's another shot up there. See that window? In the window, there's a second shot. Yes, I do. Your Honor, I think I will be able to show you proof. What? Impossible! No, oh, no, Mr. Paul Karma. Save your surprise for an... after you've seen the evidence. Very well, Mr. Wright. So what's your proof? We have evidence that the second firing of the pistol is related to this incident. Yes, this photo. Look at this photograph. This is a photograph of the scene of the crime, 15 years ago. You can see the victim lying there is Gregory Edgeworth. Where the murder weapon was fired twice at the time of the incident. The photo proves it. So let me get this straight. What the first two shots were fired? Where? Oh, please. Get a clue. Let me check the contradiction in the photo. Yes. 
should be obvious the contradiction is here. See a bullet hole in the door. Your Honor, the individual was killed by a shot from the pistol. But there is also a bullet hole in the elevator door. Also, not the murder weapon was fired twice. Thus, someone other than Edgeworth fired a second shot. Order, order! Mr. Wright, what are you driving at? Simply, Honor. At the time of the incident, two shots were fired. One went to the Gregory Edgeworth's heart, the other hit the elevator door. Remember that the defendant lost consciousness after a shot he fired rang out. In conclusion, you must agree that, someone, uh, that the second shot was fired by someone else. And Mr. Wright, but who could that someone else be? Murderer, of course. I knew I should have stepped in before your wild fantasy got out of hand. Mr. Wright, look once more at the DL6 incident case file. Look closely. Try the case summary page. Case summary. That's on page one. Okay. Have a look. Mm -hmm. Air in elevator was oxygen depleted at the time of incidents. No clues found on the scene. Okay. Look what is written there. Not a single clue was found on the scene. Huh? The pistol had indeed been fired two times. The other bullet would have been discovered on the scene. That's a good point. The second bullet has never been found. Why? Because the second bullet does not exist. The bullet that claimed the Jaguar Mishwar's life was the one fired by his own son. It's the truth of this matter, the whole truth. Um, it wasn't undoubtedly something else that made that bullet the hole in the door. Order! I will have order! Mr. Wright has proven one thing to us quite clearly. That the murder weapon was fired twice at the time of the incident. However, as Mr. Rontarma says, the second bullet fired was not found. It is highly unlikely that the police really overlooked this second bullet. So all we have is the single bullet fired. I'm afraid I have to discount the defense's claim. <laughs> Where is the judge for this wisdom in this matter? Uh, how did this happen? I don't believe that the second bullet didn't exist. Is I wrong? Have I been wrong about this whole incident? How are you doing, Nick? Why are you raising an objection? I'm sorry, Maya. What? I, it looks like I was wrong. Nick, the second bullet wasn't there, and all my conjectures are for nothing. To the elevator shaft, right? No. You said you would do it, Nick. You said you'd get Edgeworth declared innocent. Sorry. Just when I saw the photograph, I thought that the two shots had been fired. I was certain of it, I thought I had won. But there was another person, someone who else, who fired a killing shot. Now, I was wrong to think it could be that simple. This is to the insult for 15 years. Well, it seems that we have finally cleared up this incident. Only one blood was found on the scene of the crime. That shot was fired by Miles Edgeworth. Precisely. I would like to ask one thing of Miles Edgeworth before passing my verdict. Have you been paying attention to the trial so far? Thank you, Honor. Do you have any objections? Oh, I do not. You told your father. No, oh, that was not your intention. They did. Oh no. He's accepted the guilt. Very well. The statute of limitations on murder of Gregory is worth France out today. Therefore, I must pronounce a verdict to the defendant today. Right here. Right now. Indeed. Does anyone have any objections? I've been here before. It's just like my first day in court. There are so many things I know I should be saying. But my mind's been blank. I can't find the words. Mr. Wright, I have an objection. objection. Honor, I object. <laughs> Mr. Wright, on what grounds do you object, hmm? Oof. I don't know. This case is perfect. Exist. The second bullet. 
Or what? What did you just say? Nothing. Second bullet must exist. Where? I took it. King's waiting is not uh, going to produce us any answers from Mr. Wright. Wait, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. I, uh. Second bullet existed. What? You just heard proof that it did not exist. I realize that, Your Honor. Still grasping here. Just someone took it from the scene of the crime. That's what happened. The murderer! Murdered and lost, and just who is this murderer? I'm still thinking about that one. Hmm. The criminal took the second bullet, but why? Huh? First of all, how would they have found it? It's not easy to find a stray bullet, Mr. Wright. There's some pressing need for the murderer to search for that bullet. Murderer didn't need it. Right? Why would the murderer have spent the time to look for stray bullets? I haven't got a clue. Oh, Mr. Wright. Um, uh, the murderer had no reason to take that bullet. I don't want to admit it, but it's true. Uh, had to take it. Had to take it? Murderer, what does that mean? Thinking too normal. Think crazy. Don't think why the bullet was taken. Think why the bullet had to be taken. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. No idea what I'm doing. Uh, well, the murderer had no intention of taking the bullet from the scene. But uh, the murderer had to take that bullet. Had to, Mr. Wright. What do you mean? For instance. For instance, what? Uh, maybe the bullet. Uh, hit the, mur hit the murderer? No. The bullet hit the murderer? Saying, for instance, I mean, if it hit you, you would have to take it with you, wouldn't you? It's not like you could perform surgery right there, you know? Hmm. Wait a second. I was just talk uh, talking off the top of my head, but what if that's really happened? Let me get this straight. At the t uh, start of the murder, the murderer themselves was shot, and they left with the second bullet still inside of them. As leaving the only bullet at the scene of the crime? Uh, yes, I guess that's how it would work, yes. But there's a problem with that. The other two people rescued from that elevator, Miles Edgeworth and Yanni Yogi, were both unharmed. So that would mean the murderer came from outside, yes. Two men fight inside the elevator. Trying to stop them, the boy picks up the pistol at his feet and throws out. The pistol discharges and the bullet... The bullet goes through the elevator door and hits the murderer outside. The boy loses consciousness. Then the murderer opens the elevator door and sees the man inside. Hmm, Mr. Wright. You're truly the most unpredictable defense attorney I've ever known. I can tell you are grasping, yet I cannot deny the possibility of what you say. What are you saying? Deny it! Deny it! No one involved in this incident was wounded. There was no murderer! Hmm. Oh, but he took a break after this case, for multiple months. No one was wounded at the time of the incident. That's right, I can't think of anyone. Finnick, huh? I thought of something really crazy. Easy. Remember what Mr. Gilsberg said yesterday? Yes. He took a break. Long break. Break with Edgeworth dealt with a blow to his perfect trial record. Wow. Must have been quite a shock for Von Karma. He took vacation for several months after that, you see? Yes, an unusual event for the man. It was the first and the last vacation he's taken in his many years of prosecuting. What if Von Karma didn't take that vacation because of shock? But it took because it, he was injured. Which would mean could only mean one thing. It's the murderer in the DL6 incident. He was the man who shot Gregory Edgeworth. It was Von Karma. Man. Nothing wrong, Mr. Wright. You seem dazed. I know, Your Honor. Well, it's indicated possibility that the murderer came from outside. Can you give us the name of your suspect? Uh-oh. Uh should I come out and say it now? I, should, I could save it for a better time. I don't know. Uh, let's say it now. Your Honor, 
I mean, it's a suspect. One lone suspect. Uh -huh. well, this is certainly interesting news. Very well, Mr. Wright. Who is your suspect? Uh, uh, my hands are shaking. Uh, Yvonne. Von Karma. Karma? You mean the Von Karma? Prosecutor? The one standing right over there? Uh, you, you don't object? Hmm. I see no need. Why honor this ridiculous outburst with my objection? Because you took a vacation for several months starting the day after the incident. Yet you pride yourself on a perfect record. Why did you take such a long vacation without any reason? I'm claiming that I took vacation to heal my injury from the incident. Fascinating. Prove it. I would have needed surgery, no? Here I go under knife at Mr. Knight, Mr. Wright. Bring the doctor that operated on me. Have him testify. What if he still has the bullet inside of him? Nick, let's find out who this doctor is. Who oh, use? Uh, Edgeworth? No, Von Karma. Perhaps too well. He's too perfect. He wouldn't leave clues. Probably didn't go under and go to surgery. Yeah, that's what I said. He would leave a doctor with as a witness. Nobody's that perfect. So, so what, Nick? Von Karma pulled the bullet out of by himself? It's insane. No, he couldn't have. You can just pull bullets out of yourself. Wait, what does that mean? The bullet has to be somewhere, but where? <laughs> well, Mr. Wright, can you produce evidence to prove that I was shot? Show evidence. Alright, Von Karma, I'll prove it. I'll even use evidence. I know how you went to like it so much. What? Evidence that proves one camera was shot is... Metal detector. One camera is perfect. He wouldn't risk surgery, leaving an evidence trail. And then I ask, where is that bullet now? I think it's unlikely that one camera performed surgery on himself. You don't mean... I do. There's a possibility that the bullet is still inside Von Karma. Is that even possible for all these years? Well, there's one way to find out. We could use this metal detector. Well, Karma, I'm going to run this over you and see what we find. Uh, refuse. You refuse? Refusing this means... The knowledge that the bullet is still inside you? Order, order, order! Honor, the defense requests that we be allowed to use the metal detector. Judge, I call for suspension of this trial. This is a convention of privacy. Statue of limitations runs out in this case today. It was you who said we had to end it right here, right now. Hmm, hmm. Enough. I permit the use of the metal detector. Mr. Van Karma, you will submit yourself to testing. Nick, what does this mean? I don't know, but we have to give it a shot. Deep, deep. It reacted. Something's inside his right shoulder. Bullet. Mr. Von Karma. You. It was you. Hmm. I was afraid it would happen. So I remained silent. Huh? Indeed, there is a bullet in my shoulder. However, it has nothing to do with this incident. What? I was shot in the shoulder long before the L6 incident. I that the bullet in my shoulder has no relation to DL6. But Mr. Von Karma, can you prove that? Prove? I have no obligation to prove anything. It's Mr. Wright who must prove something there. Could I? Mr. Wright? Well, can you prove it? Can you prove that the bullet in Von Karma's shoulder was from DL6? Of course you can't. You don't have any of the DLC's 6 evidence. That's because he took it out of the records room yesterday. With no proof, he couldn't convict me out of any crime. The third, Mr. Wright. No, I'm the one who saw him with Mr. Von Karma. Whoa, what? You were close, one day away from freedom. 
Do you see? I have proof. What? Who would have thought you would dig your own grave trying to convict Edgeworth? I can link that bullet to your shoulder to the deal in six incidents. And here's my final proof. This. The gift you left us. You sent. Did that... A bullet? Where did you get that? This is the bullet used in the DL6 incident. This was taken from the heart of the victim, Mr. Gregory Edgeworth. The bullet is preserved by Nestle, with all the ballistic markings intact. Ballistic markings? You may recall the term. It came up in the first trial two days ago. Ballistic markings are the fingerprints of a weapon. All bullets fired from a gun are marked with that weapon's unique pattern. Examining the markings, you can tell which weapon fired the bullet. Quite accurate. We have two bullets in our possession. One, the bullet removed from Gregory Edgeworth's heart. The other, with Mr. Van Karma, is the bullet buried in your shoulder. You can analyze both bullets. And if the markings matched, we would know that both bullets had been fired from the same gun. Very same pistol, in other words, the murder weapon that killed Gregory Edgeworth. Hmm. Hmm. Mr. Von Karma, you'll let us remove the bullet from your shoulder. And we'll compare the ballistic markings to those on this bullet. And solve this case once and for all. Now, oh, Mr. Von Karma. Hmm. Ah! Is he okay? That scream. You've heard that scream before. Wait, I know. Oh, I cannot breathe. Quiet, I said quiet. I'm not making this any easier. I'm breathing in my air. Oh, I'll stop you. I'm breathing in my air. Get away. Get away from my father. Thank you. That scream I heard in the elevator 15 years ago. And Karma, it was you who screamed. Mr. On Karma? Edgeworth, Edgeworth, only you would dare defy me. So it was you. You and your father are my curse. Your father shamed me with a penalty on my record. And you, you left a scar on my shoulder that would never fade. I'll bury you. I'll bury you and your dad! 15 years already earlier. Chief Prosecutor, I'm sorry. Karma, it's not like you to make this kind of error. I never would have thought that Edgeworth would be the one to catch you. I was careless. I'm sorry, but you will have to be penalized. I covered for you in the past, but not this time. It wore. It was a shock, like none had I had ever known. Me? Penalized? It took hours for me to regain my composure. Suddenly, I found myself in the darkness. I was in the court records room. I must have wandered in there without thinking where I was going. The room was pitch black. The lights must have gone out. I went out into the hall and found my way to the elevator. I pressed the button, but nothing happened. Then there was a noise. I was in pain, a horrible burning pain in my shoulder. Instead, the lights came back on. The elevator door opened before my eyes. There were three people inside, all lying unconscious from the oxygen deprivation. Much to my surprise, a pistol lay at my feet. I knew then it was my destiny. In his last moments, Gregory Edgeworth was still unconscious. Died, never knowing who had shot him. Later, he spoke through a medium, blaming Mr. Yogi. He was fooled. It was the perfect crime. Who would have thought another man would have come to open that elevator door? Gotch. What? What are you doing? Do your job. Bring an end to this miserable charade. Now end it. Very well. Thank you. 
appears that we have come very long way to the end of this maze. Fifteen years later, Mr. Miles Edgeworth, yes, Your Honor, you are innocent. You are innocent. As you said, it was all a nightmare. Yes, Your Honor. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth, not guilty. That is all. This court is adjourned. Okay. December 28th, 5.38pm. And then lobby number 2. Nick! Nick, we did it! Did you see his face? That karma looked even paler than usual. He was pretending to be all cool, but inside you crushed him. Nick, you crushed! You gotta say... I'm impressed. It was pretty close though. I sure could had it. You know, I was on the verge of tears the whole time, myself. But now it's all just a good memory. It's finally over, Edgeworth. Right. Yeah? I, I'm not sure how to say this. You know, I know. Try. Thank you. I see. A thank you, right? You are welcome. I think you could have done better than that. Ah, so sorry, I'm not good at this sort of thing. You got a lot to learn, Edgeworth. Got you there. Oop. Amazing, pal. You pulled through just like I thought you would. I'll never forget this. Oh, you want, pal? Tonight, let's party. Dinner's on me. Yeah, my salary went down a bit this month. Who cares? See, Mr. Edgeworth? Take a lesson from Detective Gumshoe. That's how we say thank you. Mm, I see. Um, oop. I feel foolish. Don't worry, take it a little at a time. We'll get used to it. It's been 15 years since I've been seen Edgeworth this unguarded. Hey y'all. What a. Well, we're great in there. Thank you. Oh, Edgeworth, congrats. Uh, thank you all very much. I knew you were innocent from the start, of course. Look at you, you wouldn't stick your hand in the cookie jar even if no one was there. You were the witness on the first day of the trial, weren't you? Well, let bygones be bygones, eh? Speaking of which, what are you doing now, Loda? For me? Oh, I went back to college. I'm not trying to be an investigative photographer. Be quick. Really? That's too bad. Huh? Isn't it the hot dog guy from the park? Huh? It's over, Nick. Your life is over. Quite a sad face, Larry. What happened now? No, oh, Nick. I'm not long for this ward. Uh, you don't look sick. It's Kianza. She's she's going to live in Paris. Paris, Nick. She's leaving me behind. Should have seen that coming. Go, Edgy. There you are. Yes, here I am. That's edgy. Here, a little gift from my, me in celebration. Celebration? That's unusual for you. 30 bucks. You come along tonight too. My treat, pal. Uh, thanks. Looking forward to it. Here you go, Nick. The suit that questioned me. This is treat. That's not fully to stock for prison food, right? Right? Uh, I think you'll be fine, Larry. Right. Yeah? What's up? Envelope that Larry gave me. Good money on it. Well, yeah, that's not that strange. Put your money away to celebrate sometimes. Thirty-eight dollars, right? Huh. What a weird amount. I mean, it's not a little, but it's not a lot either. Thirty-eight exactly. But Nick, isn't that exactly the amount of lunch money that was stolen from Mr. Edgeworth in school? Thirty-eight dollars. Oh. No, oh, Larry, it was you. Are you so surprised about right? Huh? I was absent that day from school, right? That doesn't automatically rule him out as a suspect. What? Think back to that day 15 years ago. Larry took the day off, but he was bored. He came into school anyway. I saw the money lying there, and the rest is history. I never was good at history. Hehe. <laughs> Which war? Didn't know, did you? I suspected. I just couldn't picture Larry protecting you like he did that day. 
Everyone else was saying you did it. The whole class was against you, remember? Yeah, you will. Right, you may not know this, but we used to have saying back in school. That something smells. Usually the butts. I know, I know. Right. You guys didn't figure it out. This sure is an unexpected turn of events, eh? I had the thought it could be him, so it's very expected for me. It work? Hmm? Should have told me. I don't know, Nick. Fifteen years ago. Do you think the statue of limitation has run out, Mr. Edgeworth? I think so, yes. There you have it. Okay. Where's that leave me? You became a defense attorney because for what do you do do it? Is? Oh, you have always been something of an uh, insufferable emotionless. Yeah, and you get worked up too easily, too. Death sentence for, for both of you. And if only I had known, I'd become a prosecutor. Same goes for me, only the other way around. For the longest time, I thought that I might have killed my own father. That I might be a criminal. I became a prosecutor in part to punish myself. If I had known the truth, might have become a defense attorney after all. Or switch right? Hey y'all, line up, I'll take a photo. Hey, photo time, let's go! After that, dinner on me. Detective Gumshoot took us out of the town that night. Celebrated Edgeworth's newfound freedom, even though Edgeworth himself was still in detention. Yesterday, my head hurts. Huh? It's still only five. Maybe I should go back to sleep. Hmm. What's this? The letter? Good morning, Nick. You were really impressive yesterday. Thank you. It made me think about what I'm doing here. I'm a spirit medium. In training, of course. I wanted to help Mr. Edgeworth, too. I wanted to help you. I couldn't. I was useless. I decided to go back to my training. I became a full-fledged spirit medium for starters. I couldn't say it to your face, so I left this letter. Bye, Nick. Maya? Goodbye, what time is it? Ah, the first trains for the mountains have already left. To the station. Hmm. I guess I'm too late. Hey. Now, Nick? Maya? Hmm? You are leaving? Yeah. It's hard being a spirit medium who can talk to spirits. And I think you'll do fine without me, Nick. Thank you, okay? Wait! What? I never could have saved Edgeworth without your help. Huh? On the last day of the trial, I heard her. I heard Mia's voice. Heard my sister? It's only her voice, but still. It was the very end. I thought we had lost everything. That's my sister for you. Detective Gumshoe helped, and Mr. Grossberg, and even Larry. I'm the only one who couldn't help. I was used to think. You were the one who stopped from Karma Maya. Huh? I didn't do anything. All I did was wander around in no days. But I have evidence that you helped. Have you done? Some no evidence to share up. Well, well, she helped with the pa uh, parrot, definitely. She helped a lot with the parrot. Huh? Sorry, right, Nick, I guess I don't understand. Uh oh, what do I think about Anor's and its evidence either? Okay, you don't have to try and cheer me up. One day I'll come back and be useful. Promise. So, this is it. Good, Maya. Oh. oh well, I guess I introduced the wrong evidence. Oh well. Thanks, Nick. Let's 
so my story ends. Yeah, she she kept the evidence of the bullet. Oh my god, I forgot, I forgot. Well, so my story ends. Time to turn a new page. I didn't really load it, so well. Say goodbye to the novice defense attorney that I once was. Now a new story begins. The same old crazy cast of characters. I don't think you've played it yet, amateur. Mr. Wright, perhaps you'd like to rethink that claim? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Okay. Hey, pal, Mr. Redford came down to the prison. Wish me a happy new year. What a pleasant surprise. Detective Gumshoe! And he hung his head low and went right back outside. Kind of like he was embarrassed or something. Ah, uh, Nick? Uh, I haven't seen him lately. Who me? I've been working at a cheese shop. Miss is a nice lady, but she's not exactly what you'd call a cheap date. Huh? She's in Hawaii right now, yeah. You're right, yeah, I remember him. He has been busy lately, you know, not to ring my own bell, but I sort of thought it was Sure is grateful. Phoenix Wright. Hmm. Ah, the defense attorney from where I wrote that David for. Oh, you should know. I've taken over management of the Gatewater Hotel. Could you be in the area? Please stop by. You. Phoenix Wright. Ah yes, Mia's understudy. Is he not? I wonder how he's doing. I haven't seen him of late. Ah, the days of my youth. The scent of fresh lemon, you see? Phoenix Wright. Is he an actor? Well, I'm not buying it. Can be a star with a name like Phoenix. You know that they are on DVD and blah blah blah. I'm pleased to announce the Pink Princess is a hit. You're out that Mr. Red a great deal. Oh, and I'm keeping my face out of the public eye until the show's over. I don't want to ruin any kids' dreams, you know? From Maya the other day, it sounds like she caught the scold standing under a waterfall. I could have visited, but I didn't have time, so I sent her some pink princess trading cards. She says she can buy them where she is. What kind of place is she living at, anyway? Right, who's that? You wanna talk? Let's talk, pink princess. Right. I snuck into the studio the other day. I saw her, the one inside the pink princess's little suit. Uh, what a dog. Kind of a shock for a boy of my tender age. Yeah, I remember, right? That lawyer guy. Not me, I'm training to become a paranormal photographer. You know, that picture I took of everyone? Well, just behind them, there's a ghost. For real, now that's a talent. I'm gonna be famous. 
Head with Mia. Do, 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 do. Victory! Yeah, there's Mia. Right next to Maya. Yet, a brand new episode has been added. Well, well, well. Let me save the progress. Okay, episode five. Ooh, actual animation. Nice. Looking good, looking good. Oh. Like a man, maybe a woman, who knows? Two killers, two separate houses, two separate skyscrapers at the same time. That's a woman. Interesting. Uh, it's been two months since Maya left the office. Two months without a single trial. I've had offers, but none I took. That is, until the day that the girl showed up. February 22. Now 2 a.m. Right into all the offices. Why do I come here to the office every day? It's not like I want to work. There you are, finally! Where have you been? It's Mr. trial is tomorrow. Huh? Huh? Um, who are you? It doesn't matter who I am. It only matters who you are. The famous defense attorney, Mia Fey. Uh. Huh? Uh. Uh-oh. You're not Mia Fey, are you? I'm sorry, but Mrs. Mia Fey is no longer works here. Who you are? Coffee boy? Phoenix Wright. Defense attorney. Right, right. Wait, you're the Phoenix, right? The Phoenix, right from the Edgeworth murder case? Um, yes, that's correct. Who's an Edgeworth who was murdered, though? It's a relief, then. You're better than nobody. I'm sorry. I'm afraid I'm not taking cases right now. You're the Phoenix, right? Right? Undefeated defense attorney? Look, I'm not accepting any new cases. I'm sorry, but you'll have to try elsewhere. Please! Out of time, but please, you have to help. It's my sister. Maya, could it be? Uh, okay, I'll hear you out. Really? Thank you so much. My name's Emma. Emma Sky. I'm a scientific investigator. Scientific investigator? Okay, let's talk to her. Was it? You're a scientific investigator? Yes, that's right. Is something wrong? Oh, it's just, you seem kind of uh, jumpy, or maybe just young? Young? Maybe 16 years old this year. Oh, I see. Wait, only 16? You said to be formally assigned to Form 6 in 3 more years. The work is becoming quite well known, in my age no less. Um, so what exactly is your current position then? Well, legally speaking, Yes, you would call me an 11th grader. But I'm ready to move my job and my age, no less. Wait, another future professional in training. Case. So what's this about a case? You said the trial's tomorrow? My sister didn't do it. She wouldn't stab someone with a knife. She wouldn't. So it's a murder case. I don't care if there's a witness who saw her do it. She didn't do it. I know she didn't do it. It's a scientific fact. And there's a witness? Let's talk to her. You have to talk to her. Right, I suppose I will. I promised her I would bring Mia Faye, but... It's interesting. How would she know Mia? Scientific investigator. So, you want to be a scientific investigator when you grow up, then... Excuse me? I'm not a child, I'll have you know. Still, it's good to have a go. Albeit a very unusual one. I believe investigations should be done scientifically. Don't you? 
But yeah, sure can follow her like enthusiasm. This case is handled scientifically. I'm sure my sister's name will be cleared. Your sister? I've been doing research, you know? I'm developing a new scientific method of case investigation. I'll show you when I'm done. I'm looking forward to it. I guess we should get down to the detention center and talk to her sister. What's the relation to Mia? My sister asked for Mia specifically. Is Mia a favorite person? A few years below her in school. They went to the same school, huh? She always told me to go to Mia if I ever needed a defense attorney. Well, I need one. Um, incidentally, Mia is a woman. I'm glad you mention it. As it is more of a woman's name than the man's. It is nice of you to help your sister out like this. It must be close. Hmm. Well, actually, when she gets like she is now, I kind of hate her. Huh? What? She's my only family. She's only family? What about your parents? They died in a car accident when I was little. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, let's move towards the detention center. February 22, detention center. Visitor's room. Uh. Hmm, I wonder what's wrong with Emma. She got quiet all of a sudden as soon as we arrived. Lord, I thought I told you I didn't want visitors. Uh, sorry, ma'am. Just your sister. No excuses. You don't want to race this year, huh? Uh, understood, ma'am. What was that all about? Huh? Hi, Lana. Very funny. I seem to remember specifically telling not you, you not to come here. That's my memory is failing. Well, look. I don't want to come here either, okay? Your trial is tomorrow and you still don't have a defense attorney. I'll be the one in court on tomorrow. This has nothing to do with you, Emma. Isn't that right, Mr. Wright? Hey, I didn't know my me. I mentioned you. I heard quite a bit. Uh, I'm sorry, what exactly is that you do? My name is Lana, Lana Sky. I'm chief prosecutor for this district. You are a prosecutor? Two sisters, one a lawyer. Could this be a coincidence? Emma, Lana, I mean, they're just like. Is something wrong, Mr. Wright? Let's talk to her. Please. There's something you should know from the start, which is. In this case, is confessed to the crime. Huh? Wait, but the suspect, the suspect is me. I did it. Oh, Mr. Wright? Well, why don't you begin by telling me exactly what have happened? The crime place took yesterday, February 21, at 5 15 pm. It's quite specific. It wasn't the witness of this position. The witness clearly saw me committing the crime. Uh, my, that was a bit of a bad luck, wasn't it? Place in the underground parking lot of the prosecutor's office. The body was found in the trunk of my subordinate's car. The prosecutor's office, huh? In your subordinate's car trunk? Classy. Who's arrested on the spot? Oh, red handed, as it were. Oh, this is great. The victim. So, who was the victim? The investigator with the police department. I suppose the correct term is detective. Detective? That was due to a lot of blood. Just stab once in the stomach. I... you? It was an immediate, but the wound was fatal. See? I need to repeat myself, Mr. Wright. The victim was a detective. You know what that means? Don't you? Uh oh. What, what, Mr. Wright, what does it mean? It means... The police department will consider it a matter of pride to have me found guilty. They will use any means to their disposal to do so. It's got worse and worse with everything I learned. We are the chief prosecutor. That is correct. I'm responsible for overseeing every trial handled by prosecutors in this district. Make sure the prosecutors have what they need to do the job and manage every aspect. Those are my responsibilities in a nutshell. It's an awfully large nutshell. Still, I'm a little surprised. I don't think you'd recognize the district chief and prosecutor, Mr. Wright. Huh? In fact, it seems impossible you wouldn't. Um, Lana? 
So what happened to your hand? For this? I must have by accident. When I stabbed him, that is. I'm very good at being criminal, I suppose. She was supposed to defend this. I have to change the subject. Wait, she was in the class ahead of my Mia, wasn't she? I should have Mia. You were in school with Mia, correct? Here's Buffer. She must told you that too, did she? Oh, why not? I didn't drag him all the way here from his office. Although it seems it has very little in common with Mia. Hey! I was in law school. I was in my third year and she was adulting the auditing the class. She was different than the other students. Different? She was strong. She would do anything to become a defense attorney. Anything. That was probably why she was attracted to me. Uh, excuse me? Intellectually attracted. And I was top of her class at school. That was the best there was. Oh. She did pretty good in school too, by the way. Sounds a bit different when Emma says it. Well, Mr. Wright. Excuse me. As you can plainly see, I'm admitting my guilt. I think it's safe to say, there is no way you can take this case, none. Lana? Why? Why are you doing this to me? You never think of anyone but yourself. I knew you didn't do it, Lana, I know. So, how can you say you did? If I lose you, I'll be all alone. I hate you, Lana. Right. Yes? I believe our discussion here is ended. The rest, I leave to you. Huh. Um, you mean you are requesting services as your defense? Don't lose any sleep over it. Your client has confessed. After all, the case is over. Right. I'll do what I can to get to the bottom of this. This will be a very hard case. Lana has confessed to the crime. Yes. Something doesn't fit. That look in Emma's eyes. There's something else going on there. And I'm going to find out what. I'm sorry, Mr. Wright. Huh? What about what? My sister, she's not always like th that, you know? Huh. I just never expected to be defending another prosecutor again. Change a lot. She used to be gentle, always smiling. Everybody liked her. Let's see, sorry, but I'm having trouble imagining it out. What happened to her? I don't know for certain myself. Maybe she... well, maybe not. Sounds like there's something there that defies a simple scientific explanation. Let's go check out this underground parking lot at the prosecutor's office, shall we? Okay. February 22, prosecutor's office. Underground park. So this is the lot where it all happened. Looks like they are still investigating. My first visit to the prosecutor's office should be like this. Hey everyone, keep up the good work! Hey, what are you thinking? You are going to be my co-workers two years from now, after all. No harm in saying hello. Actually, there is. No attorneys aren't supposed to uh, examine crime scenes. I'm trying to not stand out too much. Here, see? Hey there! Just acting to go unnoticed here, partner? Partner? Is it gumshoe? No. What the fuck is this? What do we have here? Looks like a bambina got loose from the ranch and is up to no good. Fox gotta learn to keep them doggies tied down, partner. Mr. Marshall? Marshall? Looks more like a sheriff to me. Look here, bambina. I know how you feel. But this is my gang squad strike, see? Strike? This is our claim, our territory, with a mother load of evidence. If you are fixing the mess with the what are sours, we we'll regret it, partner. You know what dreams cacti out in the desert dream on? Want to? What's this guy talking about? You had a long home now. Happy trails, Bambina. Huh. Is that a hombre, a friend of yours? Oh, kind of, sort of. Yeah, he's a detective. Thinks he's a sheriff from the Wild West, it seems. Okay, let's examine. So, barrels? Oh, drum. Looks like it's filled with water. It's heavy. I can even budge it. I'm over here. It's on its side. Wait, I know. I'll hide in there and do a sneak out. 
probably just get arrested. Like you may not even have to hide in the ground to get arrested. Oh, that's suspicious. This wall is in our way. A faucet for water. Wait, I know. This wall is merely Kate hiding the truth. There's no wall but a water tank. I have to see how it makes any difference either way. Here, a phone. Let's see if it works. Hey, don't touch stuff, we don't need to be touching. I can't hear anything. My ears, no, my ears. I just need to the metric pressure. What is she babbling about? Hey, what did you just say? You can hear this fine. The phone's from broken. Where the cars leave the lot. Air on the ground makes it look more like an entrance. What are you talking about? It's mine and exit. Or maybe it's both. Kind of a dual purpose. Ah, the theory of relativity. But, uh, I've gotta write it down. Hey, Mr. Wright. Maybe you know, was Mr. Relativity German? Or uh, was he British? Mr. Relativity? Are you sure that was his name? What's this? What? Um, excuse me, officer. Wait, what are you doing, Mr. Wright? What am I doing? I just found this wallet, so I'm uh, handing it over to the police. I can't believe it. It's real basic. Anything at the crime scene is evidence. Let's be scientific about this, please. Just put it in your pocket. Why is that scientific? Sounds like a theft to me. The wallet has to stuff in the pocket. Okay. All to do already, and my tender age. Here, I'll teach you the trick to examine the evidence in detail, okay? By the way, her eyes are sparkling, and I can see that she's been waiting for me. Okay, 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 look at the court record. You have to be sure to examine evidence carefully on all sides. Now let's start examining from every angle. Are you kidding me? Oh look, I think we might be, uh, be a clue here. Check it out, with a press of... Okay. This is an ID card. Virgin Bruce Goodman. D584-21809. See, well, this is the scientific investigation is so? Yes, though I don't see what science has to do with it. Idea Let's be sure to examine every piece of evidence we find. I guess I've got to be on my toes from now on. There's gonna be so much to do now. It's gonna be harder and harder. Look, a door. This must mean something. I'm not sure that those doors mean anything. No, it won't open. A mysterious lock. Let's see what's mysterious about it. Mr. Wright? need to learn to enjoy life more. Finish our investigation, shall we? Okay, let's see. So it replaced it. At least that's something. We can check this. Yeah. 36381. So this is what the back of the badge looks like. I always thought it uh, had a safety pin. It has a number card into it. Where you can tell which attorney it belongs to. I mean, you couldn't lend it to your badge to anyone? Oh, we found out right away. That's no fun. That's, I didn't know it's like this in the back. No. I was only seeing this from this side. I thought it's a pen. Okay. Anything more? No time to waste. Let's get hunting for clues. I wonder what this is. The partner looks like got no intention of going home quietly. Sheriff, like I just said before, this is our claim. It's best be moseying along, unless you're fixing to bite the bullet. That's scary. It just tells one thing, who owns that car? Well, the little fella's got a little good news on her. 
you know who rides that red mustang with the body on her saddle, eh? Please? No problem, partner. About time for battles anyway. Get yourself the saloon up on the 12th floor. The prosecutor's office. I just find you a cravate that you like. Inspector at office. Where does this guy think he is? And when for that matter? Stuff. Look for the Reckless Saloon Carvesa. Maybe we should check out the room 12 or 12 at the High Persecutor's office. In any case, stay away from the car. Look around here all you like, just keep your paws so far from him. Right, right. Wait, maybe there's some clues around here, Master Ride. Let's check it out. Excuse me. Are you two all set? Yes? this it couldn't be you're selling lunches here in the crime scene hello half an hour was it oh uh thanks yes sir yes crunchy goodness coming at you uh, thanks i've uh, been business there is a limits to anyone with appearance especially passersby or are you officers no, but you. You don't exactly look at the top of the have a clearance. But that's hardly a way to greet someone. Even if my days of the cuff up queen are over. Oh, oh. No, I'm feeling kind of full. Maybe I'll pass on lunch. I'm quite connected to this case, you see? The images are burned into my eyes, you might say. It's all the sordid secrets. Secrets? Hear me. You're slow on, aren't you? I'm referring to the murder, stabbing of the detective. What? Witness Clary Stoney committing the crime. You mean you're the witness? My sister was talking about? Please, cough up, queen. Tell us what happened. My name is Angel Star. I'm so forgetting that. But before you know it, I'll have you whimpering at my heels. Yes, ma'am. She means it. Talk to her about this. Somehow I knew. Yesterday was the day of destiny. I knew something was going to happen. It's like I know that daily special on Friday every week is Salmon. Is this today special for some reason? The defense attorney, right? You should know that. You should know the foul misdeeds of the evil ones who haunt the standing of iniquity. The evil ones. Prosecutors. I have no qualms at all about blackening the name of innocence. Yesterday they paid hornish to the most evil one of all. Even a fourth of legal prosecutors. Of course. So she's saying there was some sort of the prosecutor's convention. I'm almost compelled to lace their lunches with something foul. Do you have a personal grievance against prosecutors or something? Or is there some kind of scientific evidence of this um, evil? Young miss. Knock me at your own risk. You'll soon find out why they call me Kappa Queen. Ooh. No seniors of all the evil ones, when they were yesterday, it was in his car that they found the body. Prove that the divorce the evils have lunches of all. Really? They what? I'm totally confused. One thing's clear. This lunch lady has finger against prosecutors. What you witnessed? So what exactly was it that you witnessed, Mr. Sarr? Star. It was a fascinating spectacle to be sure. I now feel I know what they say when they talk about a woman's wrath. See Lana Sky will that knife so the knife flesh and danger bringing him to a sad end. It was truly a sight to see. I mean you saw the very moment of the crime? The sound of his silvery ties before being cruelly cut is still a rings in my ears. The rhythmic beat of Lana Sky's knife. Wait a second, you know Lana Sky? Hmm, of course. It's quite a cheap, becoming a chief prosecutor. How many lunch boxes of sin did she pack to make that journey, I wonder? It always travels light. But why would this pretty lunch lady know the chief prosecutor's name? Angel. Um, could we ask you a bit about yourself, Mrs. Starr? I'm here every day to sell lunches. 
Import only the freshest and the best from the Far East. For some reason, the box launches are a bit are a hit here. Nobody launches here other than import them. Did you say something? No. The true consistency can understand. And you can only tell us someone who has tried General Toso's Trail Bite launch set. Uh, never mind, you win. I want to appreciate part of a Trail Bite's flavor. Anyway, I come here every day to sell lunches. My boyfriend works in the security room here at the prosecutor's office. Your boyfriend? See the security room over there? The glass will boo? I my lunches, and since I'm here anyway, Open to see them. If you are here anyway, I guess selling lunches is more important than romance. As a scientific analyst, the data available so far, you, Mr. Star, are a lunch vendor with an ulterior motive to come in here. This will analysis. Prosecutor's office. Did you have a bad experience with the prosecutor, Mr. Star? Since some hostility. Hostility? Ah, perhaps. Prosecutors are all alike, and the bigger they get, the worse they smell. Kind of like 10-day-old dames in the show chowder. I wonder if Mrs. Star was involved in some sort of legal trouble in the past. I'd be sure comes with food poisoning, scientifically speaking, of course. I mean, now you are taking cough up queen. I thought she was just a lunch butter, but now I'm not so sure. Okay, uh, let me still examine. I want to examine what I saw on the right. Wait, can I not move anymore? Let's go to the office though. Oh, the samurai guy. Okay. This is the kind of room that just screams I can do the job. What a change of your office, really. Thanks. Look, look, there's a trophy or something here. Okay. What, that shield? It's real nerve to display stuff like this. Whoever's office this is, they must be a real stuck up jerk. Phoenix, right. You never tire of prying into other people's business, do you? Bad voice! Long time no see, Edgeworth. Huh? Ah! Man, Mr. Edgeworth! You know him from somewhere? Of course! I'm his biggest man! Sister introduces once and. Right. Your sister is the chief prosecutor after all. Now, well, what brings you here? I warn you, I've been known to be a real stuck-up jerk. No, did I? No. It's just Mr. Right here, he... Hey, don't blame me. We're just trying to investigate a murder case. Murder? What he was found in this nasty big red red car in the parking lot. Hmm. It would be my car. Out of it. What? Your car? The one thing, she certainly can scream. So the body was found in your car. Oh, yeah, it's sad, right? You think I did it, don't you? After we went through all the trouble to help me last year, no less. No, we don't think you did. I mean, it was my sister who stabbed him. Uh, wait, no, she didn't do that. I mean, wait. You're the chief prosecutor's little sister then. Yes, sir. I must go. Uh, uh, nice to meet you again. It didn't sound forced at all. Ah, now I remember you. have really grown. I made it. I was a surprise for me too. I think that my own car would become the scene of a murder. It was surprising still. Being forced to prove my superior skills. I can understand. Wait, what did you say? Oh, this guy is the chief prosecutor. I'm the top prosecutor in the district. I can prosecute herself, so I'll be the prosecutor at the trial tomorrow. You, Mr. Edgeworth? Okay, Edgeworth. To be honest. It's a bit of a miracle I'm still here at all. What do you mean? Rumors. You've heard the rumors about me, haven't you? Miles Edgeworth. It's hard to remember the time when we weren't rumors about this guy. Forging evidence, arranging false testimony, illegal searches, you name it. Thanks to you, my innocence was established in the trial at the end of the last year. However, there are some who say I'm the last one responsible for the current incident. What? That's crazy. Hmm. 
people need very little excuse to think in all elevators. It's a fact of life, impossible to stop. But some of them even go so far as to present me with toys like this. I think it's funny. Toys? That bronze shield? There has to be a story behind that one. The sky. Chief Prosecutor Sky? Yes, we first worked together on a case two years ago. It was my first big case. That's right, I remember. Two years ago. I wasn't even a lawyer then, yet. Since then, I always thought that she was looking out for me. It appears that I was mistaken. I'm mistaken? Why? I mean, I know she's not the warmest person. I'm sure she holds some responsibility for you. Then, why? Why did she stab someone in the trunk of my car? Not only that, she stabbed him with my knife. What? Oh, oh Mr. Ishbor, your knife was the murder weapon? To be specific, it was the knife I keep in the toolbox in the trunk of my car. First knife added to the court record. Okay, no prints. Um, Edgeworth? What? Are you sure you didn't do it? Let's take a joke. A strange sense of her, Mr. Right? Okay, uh, let's examine. Um, I'm wondering, what the heck is this? There's a big K on it. Of prosecutors. What? What's that? The King of Prosecutors trophy. The King of Prosecutors? Great honor. They send a shield at the best prosecutor each year. What? So. With that K, that's. K stands for King? Can I get a problem with that? I designed a King of Prosecutors. Kind of like employee of the month, only better. Okay. Wow, the jacket is even looser than the usual ones. This must be his lucky trial jacket. That's a jacket, right? Never seen him wear it. There is a story behind why it's is in a frame. That'll be naughty. Take a picture. I'm getting way too excited about this. My my my! What an amazing bouquet! This is right for my straight work. Okay, okay, there's a card on it. From the dead, Wendy. Wendy? I've heard that name somewhere before. Decided? Can't steal Samurai. Wow, I want one. Huh? There's something written on the bottom of his foot. Between a rock and a hard place. Wendy. Wendy? Is this uh, uh, Edgeworth's fiance? Um, I don't think so. What a nice desk, easy to s uh, use and easy to copy eyes. Polished so well I can see my own reflection. Strange. Let me just picture a detective gumshoe. I will take that name play against the suit. Um, it's to you. So that's the key prosecutor's suit, huh? I already heard that. Else? Yeah, chest board. I'm not too, uh, up on my chest, but it looks like blue is a bit of a tight spot. Red knights have surrounded the blue pawn. The horses are mounted knights. The swords have really sharp edges. Check out that poor pawn, his head is uh, kind of spiky. It reminds me of you. That one must be an avoid chess player. What's wrong, Mr. Wright? Edges surrounding the pawn with spiky hair. Ah, uh, it's not. Oh, cute. What a pretty teapot. I want more for instant tea bags myself. Amazing. The drawer below is filled with packets of tea leaves. All sorted by place, origin, and flavor. Look at this royal blend. It's basically a splendid concoction. Such a thing is taking a hobby too far. Oh, these are all the case models? Stacked up to the ceiling. There's even a ladder. I did Edgeworth was not good with heights. Must have someone helped to someone get them for him. And okay. I've studied these these reports so closely. Pretty cool. Goodness. Really fit points with the bullets up on that ladder. Okay, uh let's check the code record. I guess I can examine this, right? I can find
this open? This must be the victim's blood, right? Either that or, or Edgewood cut himself peeling an apple. Edgewood doing with that knife like that, anyway. Hey, maybe it depends his weakens. And it didn't do hard. Edgeworth is the world. I think the fruit peeling theory is more likely. Are you kidding? I also picked picture him and outdoors mana. Or there's a scary thought. Nothing else here. What about that stupid statue? Check it out, there's a metal plate here. Hmm, looks like the names of the all previous recipients. Uh, one guest listed a bunch of times. Karma, I guess he must have been a foreigner? Oh, yeah, that's probably it. Wherever he's from, he must have been an amazing prosecutor. I can meet his natural von Karma one time. He says that his name is some kind of. What if I present him with this? Edgeboard, I was wondering about this. Mr. Right? Huh? What? Are you sure you should be showing that to Mr. Edgeboard? Oh, you could. Wish I could have been on the same side as Mr. Edgeboard. Then my sister would be found guilty. Besides, any deeper, I'm going to start getting depressed. The... I'm supposed to discuss evidence with the defense. Especially with I don't like you much, does he mean? Right? Uh, with Edgeworth, it's never personal, it's all about winning the mob. Basically, they said you were the best of the best last year, huh? You think that's foolish green elsewhere, right? It was the day of war to receive that travesty. Huh? What's that? You go to the police department and receive a broken shield. Department is yes, right next to the police station downtown. Been there, haven't you? Where Detective Gumshoe works. Yeah. I was wondering something about your shield. Why is it broken? What does it matter? I more important things to worry about. All right. Nothing to be concerned about this award. For better or for worse. This year was a very busy day for prosecutor's office. Maybe. Should have more about history. Day of the crime. Can you tell me more about history? In order. History was the annual cleaning day of the prosecutor's office. Cleaning day. Working with the police department, we sort out and file all evidence for solved cases. There was evidence transfer. I can defend for all cases in other words. Oh, and another thing. Ceremony was held at the police department. Annual review of the first one, outstanding police officers are prosecuted. That's when I got a shield, I got to the police department the afternoon, and I got back here at 5 12. That's very precise. I can sell an edgeboard, pride ourselves, and prestigious, Mr. Wright. Oh, I place little faith in my memory. The only thing I trust is solid evidence. Okay, that's good. Edgeboard parking stopped added to the call record. Here's the parking stop from the underground vault. The murder took place around 5.15. The murder happened right after he got back. What, Mr. Wright? I appreciate if you direct that suspicion very elsewhere. Mm. Who the fuck is this? Excuse me, but is Mr. Edgeworth uh, anywhere on the premises? I'm Edgeworth, what is it? I'm here, sir, at the request of the chief, sir. I see a report, sir. A rep report, sir. Report? What? Did you find a new evidence in the case against Chief Prosecutor Sky? I don't like the way this conversation is going after at all. The Sky, sir? No, sir. The name of that kind, sir. Not in this report, sir. Huh? You just heard Edgeworth's lid blow. Mr. Edgeworth, this is the very one very tight, is it? I made a clear request to the police department, did I not? I need to focus on the trial tomorrow, so don't bring me anything unrelated. Sir, but, but sir. I'm just following your orders, sir. They told me to bring this to you. I wasn't aware of the particulars of your arrangement with us. Give me your name. 
Uh, yes, uh, yes, sir. Uh, Mimikins, sir. Officer Mimikins. Wait, Officer Mimikins. Take a report and leave. Uh, report and leave. And good luck with that uh, trace next month. Whimper. But sir, I I didn't know. The guy it looks like he was upset on the day they gave our brains it. Good luck. Right. Yes, sir. Ah, he caught me off guard. As you can see, I'm busy. You may leave now. Let's do what he says, Mr. Wright. Victim was a detective from the same department as this patrol man just now. Go down to the police department, you can ask more later. Uh huh. Thanks. Seems to have finally calmed down at least. Okay, let's go to the parking lot. Let's move to the police department. February 22. Police department entrance. Ooh, we're finally here. Why would they put police department so far away from the prosecutor's office? It's me. They took almost 30 minutes by taxi. The traffic wasn't even that bad. The police department, huh? I've only been to criminal affairs next door. Hmm. Hold on, what's that? Disturbing. Why does it undulate like that? Wait, I know. This is the blue badger. Trying to make him the police mascot. Wow, Mr. Wright, you sure know a lot about the police. Still, he does seem familiar somehow. Not the blue badger. Who's the next to him? He appears to be dancing with a blue badger. Oh, he noticed me. I'm sure he's running over here fast. Hey, Paul, what are you doing here? That's my late detective, Dalgamshu. Specifically, why were you dancing over there? What? I'm well. Well, at least he doesn't seem to be busy. This is our chance to get information. Hey, I'll have you know I'm a very busy man, pal. Let's talk to him. The case. I'll give you one word of advice, pal. You'd better not agree to defend the uh, agree to defend the suspect of the, in this case. Uh, why not? What? Well, it's just that chief prosecutor has confessed to the crime. Says that she summoned the detective to the prosecutor's office and she killed him. But what if she's not telling the truth? Yes, well, no. Come on, pal, there's plenty of evidence against her. What if the evidence was faked? Hey, pal, can I speak to you for a second? Not me. Who is this little girl so peeved at me? She's relative to the suspect. She's Lana Sky's sister. Whoa, the chief prosecutor's little sister? Just please investigate the case carefully, okay? Scientifically. Yes, sir. Oh, by the way, you may want to keep your voices down. You don't want to be overheard using the words like faked. Huh? It's just it's just a sensitive issue with these with us these days. Oh yeah, after karma, of course. So what are you doing here, Detective Gumshoe? Me? Oh well, I don't think. You kicked me out uh, of criminal affairs. Detective Gumshoe, what did you do this time? What do you mean this time? What happened? I know things are busy right now. I mean, with, with my sister in the case and all. True. We've never had a chief prosecutor murder anyone before. Only the highest ranked people are being let into criminal affairs now. The lowest ranking guy in there is our chief of detectives. We're not letting any of us ranked file detectives in it at all. One of you. I know this is an important trial, but isn't that a little odd? Anyway, I thought I would spend the day uh, getting the badger dance down pat. Um, isn't there anything else you could be doing? Chief of Police himself is directing this investigation, pal. Mr. Marshall was assigned to the underground parking lot. Mr. Marshall? When I think about it, Emma did seem to know the Marshall guy. Marshall was in charge of the crime scene. It's unheard of, pal. Let's present him with the, with the knife. Maybe the ID? I'm Detective Gamshu, what can you tell me about this? Huh? Well, this is Detective ID's card. You just keep that, you have to turn it into the police. It's people like you that get me into so much trouble all the time. Detective Gamshu must drop his card a lot. Let's see. Bruce Goodman. Goodman? Sounds familiar. Uh, my mistake. But didn't you work? Oh, now I remember. Bruce Goodman. The victim. That's what I thought. 
Oh, it's more detective gumshoe. Uh, uh, I'm in Mr. Edgeworth Tower 7 with Edgeworth's in our car. What would drive, what would drive Chief Prosecutor Sky to do such a thing? Wait, I didn't mean... I mean sure, of course someone else really did it. Someone who must have, um, someone who must have a grudge against Mr. Edgeworth. I don't know if they seem a little too well organized to be a confidence. Poor Mr. Edgeworth, what could have happened? I have to find out a little more about what's going on with Edgeworth. Hey, okay, what about the... Okay. Hey, that's it! That's the King of the Persecutor Award that Mr. Edgeworth got yesterday. With the award ceremony is active gumshoe. Of course, pal. I got an award for diligence, myself. Congratulations. I was wondering, why is the award a shield? Why is it broken? Oh, well, there's a reason. Um, I'll tell you what it is later. It's forgotten. I'm proud of Mr. Edward for winning that award. Even with all the naysayers in the persecutor's office. Naysayers? I do because of the rumors. Okay, next one. I can stop. Oh, Mr. Edward, oh, okay, yes, the same thing. Talk to him? Who's Goodman? Oh, this ID card belongs to the victim? A detective like myself. Detective Bruce Goodman. Hmm, don't you think it's strange? I mean, why would the victim's ID card be lying on the ground where he found it? Well, Detective Goodman should have been at the police department yesterday. It was an evidence transferal case. And two years ago. Evidence transferal. It's strange we mentioned that too. Goodman was killed at the prosecutor's office. Well, that's the thing. It's hard to say this, but where is the chief prosecutor's guy called him out there? The parking lot. Lana's confessing as much. Uh, the troubles? This is a tough spot. Again. Again? Well, it started with the murder of the defense attorney Hammond. Mr. Edgeworth was found innocent. Listen, pal, there have always been rumors about Mr. Edgeworth. Forging evidence, making deals with the witnesses. Nothing outright, but there were always whisper rumors. Ever since he was accused of murder, no one's whispering. Not practically shouting. But there's no evidence against him. Well, Mr. Edgeworth has always had an unusually strong ties to the department higher ups. <sighs> Only natural that people would be suspicious. I have no idea who's under the gun. Anyways, this latest case that started a new rumor. People say the only reason I took the case is because he is aiming for the chief prosecutor position himself. But what? I know the truth, pal. Nobody wants to be the one who has to prosecute the chief prosecutor. Edward is biting the bullet on this one. I think this for all of us. Very helpful. You know, that one was saluting the other guy. He must be a detective. Then I said, Hey, you do that, your suit will get killed, buddy. That's hilarious, sir. I laughed so hard I cried. Because he wasn't saluting, he was wiping your tears from his eyes. A good pair. Can I go in? Texas and there look for BBC. Just imagine right now. And those hours, a police drama in action. How the all fails to excite me. I usually want the posters that are hanging up at the bulletin board there. Do you know this face? If you do, dial 911. You know, Mr. Wright, I've always thought it was kind of funny. I've never seen anyone who looked like the people in these posters. They hardly even look human. She has a point. Let's move back to the offices, maybe, and perhaps the detention center. Never mind, back to the parking lot. You heard about something? No. Sent to her the ID. What is card? Bunch large vendors only accept cash, no cards. There's no card belonging to someone else. No, this isn't a credit card. It's a ID card. 
Let's do detective. You're showing this to me, Lunch Lady Y. It's like showing you fine all the time to a detective. I always feel like I'm being mocked. Can I? Can you take a look at this? You, yes? You said you wanted some hot tea, right? I know, but thanks. She didn't even look at me. You must have to brew the leaves. A long time to get a rich flavor like this. Pre infused the leaves with steam before brewing. I knew it, so that's the secret of aroma. Squeeze it. The only thing is, I'm smelling here is wasted time. Okay. Did you take a look at this? Ooh, yes. I said you wanted some hot tea. Okay, that's the same fucking bullshit. Let's check this actually. What's it for? 712. It's dated on the day of the crime. The murder took place 3 minutes after Edgeworth Park is. Only he was held up at a couple of extra X lights. He wouldn't have been caught up in this whole affair. Perhaps. Just go to show you. you never know what will happen when you run a real light. I don't know what to do then. This is dated on the day of the crime, the murder place. Okay, you already heard that. Stand. Look at this. Yeah, that's the key again. Oh, I don't leave him alone. Salmon? I don't know. Oh. Wait. That's the two. The office. Leader. Now, where to go? Yes, let's go back to the Let's find him with the knife again. Maybe it's gonna work. Let's try for turn up okay. Stop Edgeworth's troubles. Get the spot again. And. Yeah, I heard this already. Sure. Yeah, I was wondering about that. What? The Dancing Blue Badger? It's my masterpiece. I made this detective jump shoe. She threw together some designs and I just did my thing, pal. It worked. Very powered so it can go anywhere. No switch, so it just dance, dance, it dances until the battery dies. Blue, blue Badger faded the dance until he drops. The Blue Badger panel. And that's all I know about that. I'm not officially on the case, you know. Thank you. Why aren't you handling this case, Detective Gumshoe? You're not the guy who was in the name. The guy in the party can love. Now, did we Officer Marshall? I can appoint a director by the uh, Chief of Police. Officer Marshall? Is he some kind of Wild West Sheriff or something? No, Jake Marshall is just a regular officer. 
I missed LA for a moment there. I wasn't sure. Oh, well, let me try to make things a little easier. Show them this and they'll let you examine the game. Maybe. Detective Gamshi is letter of introduction editor short. Well, it's fair to investigate a crime scene. That's cool. I'll be surprised and just get us anywhere. I'll be surprised if Act like you're supposed to be there, and nobody will. No. Okay, let's move back to the underground. Story 22. Underground blackmail. The investigation is still going. I have to be getting back to the shop. Sorry, it looks like you'll be stuck in this pit until the sun sleeps. I'll see you in my dreams tonight, then, baby. Oh, still here? Hello. What a surprise looks, did I mention? I've got a boyfriend in criminal affairs too. What happened to the security guard? Hey, what's wrong, Babina? You're looking like a doggy that's lost its herd. Great Marshal. French guy to put in charge of the Let's present him with the letter of introduction. Do you mind reading this for me? Just to warn you. Sound letters to the Right? This letter of introduction from Detective Gamshu. Maybe in investigate? Gamshu? Ah, oh, that old cow dog? Holding a birthday party or something? Oh, that's why it should say letter of introduction. Just invitation. Let me just control it. Wait, why am I getting all defensive here? No worries, this proves it's from Detective Gamshu. Better than about the. I guess I'd better let you in then. Thank you, Officer Marshall. That's right, he's a patrolman, the detective. Reminds me. Hey, wait a second. Isn't that crime scene supposed to be handled by a detective or higher? Poor folks. These are falling. This is our gold strike. We like the settler. Strike down for plans unknown. Manifest destiny. Let's have a good to nanny. So, police investigations are like settling by. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you say? You say you won't be needing this anymore. Just letter of introduction crumpled and it started. Okay. Talk to the marshal. Sir Marshal, could you tell us more about the victim? I always die young. Remember that, partner. Could you be a little more specific? This good man. That's the detective, right? Oh well well, aren't you feisty dog out there now? Detective Goodman was stabbed here at 515. Well, Madonna told me the tale. I mean, it's the witness, the potential star. He stabbed the chest, a fine piece of art. A fine piece of work. This here's the autopsy. Of course. It's an autopsy report. Nice. That's been an hour and a half of. Okay. Is my sister involved with the victim in any way? You should mention that, Bambina. Prospector Sky and Detective Goodman had nothing in common at all. Nothing in common? They apparently worked together on a case few years back. There's some motive. Well, I wasn't particularly gifted detective. For one reason why I didn't work with Chief Prospector. My sister called the victim here on the day of the murder, right? Oh, to this parking lot. Oh, it seems. I'm calling an unarmed man of the shit out on time now. I don't mean any offense, but Officer Marshall, you are a patrolman, right? Not a detective. Call me out. I should you have for that in Texas. I was one of the fancy shoot detectives two years ago. Really? That tells me. But you're a patrolman now, so how can you be in charge of a crime scene? Nothing gets by you, does it, Bambina? So why are you in charge? No reason. We're just short on answers now. I'm keeping an eye out and Although, Gamshu was saying he had nothing to do. Nothing important at least. There's nothing but a sad old cow dog. He can't find his tail. Maybe it's because he runs without Edgeworth, eh? Edgeworth? Cow dog's been kicked out of this cattle run. The order of the chief of police. I still don't realize it yet. Maybe Gamshu should kick out the investigation. Okay. 
Let's turn in. Right, right. I wanted to investigate this. Let's take a cell phone. The analysis would suggest this belonged to the victim. I can think of anyone else that it could belong to. I'm trying to figure out that. Should we check it out? Check it out. Right, let's check it out. Calls you've made and received. This button displayed the last number you called. Really, isn't it? I guess you didn't know about it. Or it is upon you, but even I know about something like the dial. Huh? Oh, sorry. It's just you never know what people from your generation. Whatever. Let's check this phone out. See who the owner of this phone call last called. Oh, this defense attorney doesn't first pushing the button. Beep. Hey, that's wrong, I know that. What's going on over there? Beep. Ah, oh, so sorry. See you, partner. Mr. Dial on the, their phone, didn't you? Well, yeah. Who is this anyway? On the ground over there. Who's the, uh, who's the Who's the chief prospector Sky? What? My sisters? Apparently dropped it when she was taken into custody, right after the crime. Well, the last call was made right after the murder occurred. I think she was fixing to call someone. But she only spoke for a few seconds according to this. Where did she go? No idea. Sorry, partner. I have a question for you, partner. I had a phone ring just now. It was new and was trying to bring to you. Oh, that? Oh, no, sorry, that was my phone. Oh, what? Your phone? Um, it's kind of strange, but... Someone called me right as we picked up the other phone. The wrong number. I hope you're not lying. We should you out that in Texas, partner. Yeah, I've been... Edit the rap of the one star patrolman. Okay, examine. Oh, not examine. Examine the code record. And open it again. Which one do you look like it? Uh, I don't know. Finals. Okay, never Let's close it down. I can finally check the car right now, alright? Examine the car. What's this? Looks like a note of some sort. 6, 15, 12, 12. Okay. 6, 75. Something written on it. Alright, let's see. Six seven S. Love to. There's a name printed on the power uh, on the paper about that Goodman. It fell out of his pocket when he was killed. Well, so what does it mean, Mister Wright? I was supposed to know. The cell. Objective reasoning. Go to Edgeport. Right. Sure, I wouldn't know. Or edit the code record. Okay, let's talk to him again. Last uh, So, there's no connection between Detective Goodman and my sister. That's correct, but there's a gold mine of evidence against her. Huh? Perspective tomorrow is none other than the Edgeworth himself. After your sister played is decided, Bambina. Any condolences? Mr. Yeah. Marshall. Bambina? How can you say that? And my sister, you were... There's something that her sister that I don't know about? Apologies, Bambina. Nothing else has gotten to me. It's a dry wind. It's a, a 
blowing through the prospector's office. Erwin or Elwin sounds something. Suspicions about Mr. Edward have been flying around for nearly two years now. First evidence and ranching testimonies, I mean? It's unbeatable because he did hit whatever it took to win. Unbeatable, that is, until he met you. Rumors are just rumors, aren't they? The prosecutors we are talking about. Evidence is everything to them. If you follow the rumors about Edgeworth, their source, you find one person. They are off limits. Touchable. Okay. One person? Who? I can say this, but. Your sister, Bambina. Chief Prospector Lana Scott. What? My sister? Edgeworth couldn't rustle all those cattle by himself. Some people load their guns. Bullets. Some people load them with deals. Well, you're saying Edgeworth was making deals to win trials. Where there's gunshots, there's bound to be bullets. That's what the old timers say. There's a big old secret hidden around here somewhere. Everyone knows it. Is that why Detective Gumshoe was taken off the case? Did he target him because he was closest to Edgeworth? So, well, how are you doing, Mr. Wright? Wish we got some clues. We have an autopsy report, a note from the victim, and a cell phone. Do you think we'll be okay? Well, the only thing still bothering me is that Lena is confessing to the crime. She says she did it. No problem. I can guarantee that she is not the criminal. Oh, by the way, Emma? Yes? I know that song in your phone plays when it rings. What? It's the Seal Samurai theme song, isn't it? Popular TV show for kids. The phone that rang earlier was not mine. It was yours. It was 5.18, just after the murder took place. Your sister called you, didn't she, Emma? I, I am sorry. Can you tell me what you talked about? I, uh, she hung up right away. Let's see. Cell phone updated in the court records. The detective is murdered, and the suspect is top prosecutor in the district. A bad feeling about this. But maybe I still don't know everything that went on here. Okay, to be continued. Well, I would like to thank you all for watching, and we'll be continuing this case next time. Take care.